Hello, welcome to another episode of the Autos and Airways podcast. I am your host, Alex Shum. Today, I'm joined by my friend, Emeka Osai, from the Driven Hard YouTube channel and Driven Hard Official on Instagram. Uh, we're going to be discussing the new Range Rover in today's episode. Of course, us both being Land Rover owners, it's definitely um, an, an interesting topic to talk about today. So, Emeka, thank you so much for coming on. I'm looking to, forward to discuss Range Rover with you. Yeah, bro, this should be fun, huh? So- it will, yeah. Let's let's dive into it. Yeah. So why don't you uh, tell me a little bit about yourself, and then we'll uh, go into the cars and bids, and then we'll uh, yeah talk about right. Range Rover. Um, man, just always been a car guy. So just ever since high school, I grew up driving or practicing learning how to drive on my dad's 1986 Jeep Cherokee Laredo. It was white, bare bones, no options at the time. It was the only car he bought brand new. And I love that thing to death. But even before that, he had a 1982 Toyota Supra. And um, I used to wait in the garage for him to get home um, so I could jump inside and just start pushing buttons. Like, so, and this was when I was like three years old, right? Like, yeah. So I've always been a big car guy. Um, but going back to the Jeep, the amount of times I've got that thing stuck and had to call like a truck to tow me out or 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 whatnot um it's incredible like uh the engine uh it went through three engines and two transmissions between 86 (laughs) and like 2002 right and uh, i even bought an engine at one point because you know my dad was short on cash like wasn't it like a new engine for it wasn't in the wasn't in the budget right right and uh so i was like okay well you know here's a couple grand that i saved up literally everything i saved up here you go. Can I use it to go snowboarding? Yeah. And he's like, yeah. And so I've just always been a car guy. Yeah. I don't see spending money on cars as a bad thing. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's yeah. If you're into it, say. if you're into it, why not? There's people that spend money on, you know, vacations. There's people that spend money on, you know, you know, people collect alcohol, people collect watches, people collect right. art. You know, it's just another thing. If you're into it. If you if you have the means to do it, do it, you know. Um, 100%. And then just fast forwarding, going into the Range Rover, um, you know, my dad was always a big fan of Range Rover, right? Porsche and Range Rover is two big things. And those are like my two big things, mm-hmm. obviously, probably from the influence of him. Um, and he always wanted a red Range Rover. Always. And I remember seeing the first, the first one. It's the, uh, ah, okay. Two generations ago, what's the full size one? What's the model? The L322. L322, right? The one the Queen drives. Yeah. Right. The last of the farmers range overs. Yeah. Um, and I remember seeing the first one ever driving up to Whistler when I was going up there to go snowboarding, driving up there. And I called my like, you won't believe what I'm looking at right now. <laughs> you know? And uh it just yeah, you know, and that was really when it started, like, oh my God. And um so I, you know, ended up figuring out how to make some cash and work my ass off. And, and, uh, and I bought a Range Rover Sport, uh, a red one, obviously, because there was no other color option. And uh, autobiography, because there's no other trim option. Um, and yeah, loved it. And, uh, you know, I, I have the video of my dad or of me picking it up and my dad at the dealership and with my mom and my brother. Yeah, yeah my brother. And um, they had no idea. My brother knew, but my parents had no idea what yeah. was going on, right? And uh, my dad was actually the first one who, who turned it on. That's awesome. And, uh, yeah, I got a really, it's cool. I should probably watch it. I'm, I'm, I'm getting goosebumps, yeah, honestly, yeah. like uh, hearing uh, this. Uh, and, you know, it's I'm, he passed away last July. That's why we came back to Canada. But right. um, my sincerest condolences. We, parents, parents die. I know, but uh, it, it, yeah, it's uh, you know, if you, you know, I pulled away from the dealership with him in it, and we're driving, and you know, so it was like, like as much as it meant for me, it was for him, mm-hmm. you, you know, and so that was it, and uh, yeah, yeah, so definitely like it's it, it's it's something special, and you know, I was joking around, I was telling my wife. Now that I think about it, I might just say, fuck it. I don't know if I can swear. Sorry. Yes, you can. Apologies. Um, Go ahead. You know, I was like, I, I don't know if I ever want to, you know, I was like, I don't know if I want to give that thing up. You know, but now that I think about it, like the story I just told you, I don't know if I want to give it back. I might just continue to overpay yeah. for it and keep it forever. Yeah. Who knows? I don't know. Um, 
It's like you can only lose so much money, right? Right. Right. <laughs> right. Eventually, eventually you can't lose any more. <laughs> right. Like, yeah. Right? And it's a so, land rover. I mean, my, my last one, we put way too much money into that. <laughs> so yeah, man. Um, but anyways, um it's uh yeah, so that's kind of the story with with that there's something else i was going to add on it but I, I i can't remember what it was but uh yeah so it's 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 it definitely means something special to me um but also just being a car guy like i just love what they stand for and what they are and and what the brand means and the legacy and the heritage behind it especially as i'm learning more and more i'm not an expert by any means but i am definitely an enthusiast um you know i think i own freaking stock in the company <laughs> Yeah, okay, like I'm in. You're it. You're all um, in. You know, still, still waiting for an invitation to a board's meeting so we can fix some 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 stuff that needs to be fixed. Invite me along. With okay, you. we we but can. We'll see if Terry's paying attention to this. Yeah, but um, you know, it's uh, yeah, man. So watching the 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 live event of the new of the new one being launched and everything, first time I ever sat through a big car launch, but uh, yeah, so I'm excited for it, man. I got my I got my fifty seven pages of the release 50, ready to go. So. Fifty seven fucking pages for a press release. So real quick, I wanted to add on to you know you're talking the the L three twenty two. I remember that I was I was little when that thing came out, um, but I always remembered my mom always wanted a Range Rover. And at the mm-hmm. time, it was the L three twenty two. She wanted it in that she was she always called it sage green, but it, the technical co- the actual name of the color was Giverny green, and she always wanted that. And my dad was like, yeah, I don't want to pay that. I don't want to pay all that money for a Range Rover. I don't want any of that. And then, you know, she needed a car with seven seats for some reason. Um, and she, we ended up getting a, an LR4 or the Discovery 4 for the international viewers. Um, and that was like, it really was almost just as nice as the Range Rover in terms of quality and materials of course you get the higher end Range Rovers they're going to be nicer that's just how it is mm-hmm. but and she loved that was like her first really nice car and then I ended up getting that car uh, that was my first car mm-hmm. um, and she got the uh, fifth gen discovery when that came out and yeah I mean, it was my first car and it's just it I got rid of it earlier this year uh, for the Defender and that car is very special it has a very special place in my heart um but yeah it's just kind of funny like that and i think the l322 is probably my favorite version or generation of the range rover just because it it had that old school feel but it was modern and luxurious and comfortable and the l405 was just better in every way but it in my opinion it just didn't have that classic just there's a feel there, to it there's a there is a gap definitely um with with the l405 it just it stepped it up onto you oh yeah it is a bit more posh it is a bit more luxurious yes you can still go beat it up absolutely it's better off-road than the old one and everything but you're gonna re- you're gonna think about it a little bit more right whereas right the the previous generations um they were 100 more of a workhorse um but then you also also always have to keep in mind what was happening with technology and everything at mm-hmm. the time and then that's something we're going to get get into again yeah. with the new one with the whole two-wheel drive aspect yeah. of it like because that for me I, well you saw me on instagram i was flipping the hell up until i yeah. started talking to people and they're like okay hold on <laughs> the fender does the same thing i'm like oh wait what some of them not all of them not all of them but we will get into that. So real yeah, quick, we'll I that. want to, uh, let's do the cars and bid segment. So I have the car that you pulled up. Um, I'm going to share my screen. Was it the Forerunner? Yes, it was. Yeah. So gonna... there, there was a classic Ranger over on there, but then it was gone. Yeah. Oh, it probably because the auction ended. Yeah, probably got, right. Because I saw that on there. And then there was a disco on there. Um, but I was like, no. And then <laughs> there was one part of the video I watched with that guy. And that's why I chose the, I was like, no, I want this. So you chose a 98 Forerunner. Very good car. You know why I chose it? There was one thing he did on the video that I was like, oh, that sucks. He, the heating and cooling, he just went, <laughs> and he just made the coolest sound. Just when we used to slide the dials, I was like, yeah, yeah I missed that. Right? 
yeah, I mean, this is it's just, it's this is a really clean old it's four so ride. clean. It's got one hundred forty seven thousand miles, so that means it's barely broken in. Um, I mean, just, no, the interior stupidly it, clean, like stupid. And this is the cool thing about what uh, Doug does on this on this cars and bids because you can't just put anything. It has to be rare. It has to be in absolutely pristine mm -hmm. condition. If it's not rare, such as this is not a rare car, but the condition is amazing. It's extremely rare. It's stock, I believe. Um, and so I was like, you know, two I owners, know how much it was, but um, it is, there's still four days left. It's up to four, $4,400 US dollars. Yeah. Like I was like, damn, that's such a clean, clean. And all the ones you see are beat up. They've been to hell and back. And they still work, but this one is it's so California. nice. California cars are the ones you want. Right. No rust. No. Yeah. Well, I take that back. There's some <laughs> paint chips and some rust. But, hey, it's, it's a car that's over 20 years old. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it's a solid choice. I applaud that. And whoever ends up with this car is going to get a really nice car. Yeah. So... I'll show you my car. 2008 Jaguar XKR. Now, this was a car I loved. So this was kind of like the, the F-Type replaced this, but it, the F-Type is a sports car. This is more of a GT. Okay. So the XK, I believe, I don't remember the first year for it, but it was in like the mid-90s. And then the second gen came out in 05 or 06. And this is the second generation. Mm -hmm. um, this one is pre AJ133. This actually has the AJ134 engines, the 4.2 liter supercharged V8, 420 horsepower, 413 pound feet of torque. Um, that's 500, it's like around 560 Newton meters of torque, if I'm not mistaken. Transmission, it's the ZF, uh, it's 6 HP 26. So it's the uh, before they went all eight speed. So at the time, this was like the best torque converter automatic you could get and yeah. um this one's pretty clean but it does have some miles on it 121,000 miles but these engines these uh aj134 engines are pretty bulletproof uh they were used in the lr3s uh earlier l322s um uh the first gen sports as well we use this before they all went to the five liter mm. uh, black i mean it's it's celestial black with the with the caramel or caramel interior um very nice and these cars were they were cool um you don't see a whole lot of them back seats are useless you can fit like six-year-olds if you amputate their limbs but it is it's a, it's a it's a nice car it really is a nice car and i mean it's got interestingly this is what year this is an 08 in the heated seat and heated steering wheel controls are in the screen in 08 Cool. But yeah, this is a, a, a nice car. Um, and they're, they're actually pretty reliable for, for something from JLR. Uh, and it was... Uh, Jaguar has changed. Yeah, they have. They really have. I'm a big fan of the stuff they have right now. So yeah, that will uh, end it for the Cars and Bigs. Cars and Bigs. Cars and Bids segment. Um, so let's uh, talk the all new Range Rover, the L460. Yeah, man. Um, okay. What do you, okay, you wanted to start with like initial impressions, like first impressions? Yeah, I'll let you, uh, you take that away and then I'll give you my right. thoughts on it. So, okay, let's talk about the back. And mm -hmm. I wonder, like the marketer or the sales person in me is like dissecting how they've been talking. And I'm like, I wonder if they started, if the way they talk, and it might've just been, they planned it all but how they were talking about the back and they they pulled a lot of attention to it but then that might have just been how they were going to do it anyways or they might have started he hearing about it and they're like we need to refocus and explain more um i didn't hate the back at all i i i think it looks stupid without the range rover on it in some of the leaked photos mm -hmm. but i thought it i'm like ooh, this looks cool um uh i was a little bummed at the taillights in terms of like, I liked the kind of square circle things. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't really like the whole uh, straight line. Now, 
as with everything, it always looks better in person. Um, I like the kind of like, it's gone until you need it type of view. Um, however, I was driving yesterday and a Telluride, uh, I think it was a Telluride. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, wow, that looks like the rear of the new Range Rover. <laughs> that's like, a- just like the, the, it had vertical, vertical taillights. I know exactly yeah. what you mean. That, that's all I'm talking yeah. about, the rear, like, you, you know, um, I, I just, it, it, no, it just called the same de- design language in mm-hmm. that aspect. But as soon as I saw it working, I love the hidden away turn signals. And I just, I honestly think the back is the best looking part of the vehicle now. Um, and I think it's going to look even better in person. And everybody online who is saying, oh, it's, uh, they're like, oh, it's growing. Of course, it's growing on you. This always <laughs> happens. You guys have to remove your emotion from it and look at it from a logical standpoint and just re- remove the emotion. Because everyone said when the new, when the 406 came, right? The L406, when that Five. came out, L405, sorry. Uh, when that came out, it looked like a big evoke because of the front end because i guess it was the evoke had the that headlight style first and then they put it onto the range Rover. right it was um, the new corporate face of, of Land right. Rover. and i was like it started with the evoke yeah um so you know whatever people are people but yeah yeah man i like it there's um it's minimal mm-hmm. but the more as i was going through it today and i was i was um building it and uh just watching more videos and, and reading this book on it um yeah no it's like all right they got some cool tech coming into it uh nothing that the industry is going to be like oh wow that's amazing way to go range over um because nothing's like right it's like it's, it's not like, revolutionary it's no, just it's and like that's always i've always questioned why they've done that um why they've like terrain response too and there's an error in here because tra- i have terrain response too on my sport but in official land rover documentation here it's saying that terrain response 2 was introduced in the defender i'm like no it's not i no I, that came I, out in the uh, l405 yes so right. let me um I, go you finish that up real quick please. okay yeah just quickly and then so i was like why why don't 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 try to like so there's a couple of things that I, I wonder why they did stuff like that. Who should be fired because of things like that? It's just, it's like the waiting depth. They're talking about the, the, the waiting depth is 900 mil. It, it was 900 mil in the last gen, 900 mil in my sport. It's okay. It's 900 mil for anything. That's not a small Land Rover product. Yeah. I don't understand why you guys are focused on that when it's not new. Like, why aren't we talking more about the two-wheel drive aspect of it. That, I think, is a way yeah. bigger selling point than the freaking waiting depth that hasn't changed. I'm right. sorry. I'm going off on a rant here. Yeah. but like, That's like, fine. Who, who, designed, who designed these talking points for them? I don't know. So let me kind of give you my real quick okay. spiel on this thing. Okay. Um, I watched it. Actually, I, I was at work, so I, I was, like, watching it but not fully paying attention. Then I yeah. got home and I watched the whole thing, and I was like, Oh my God! This reveal. What? What did it? Yeah. Jerry with a G. The thing that the thing that stuck out the most. He was talking about the design of the car, and he was like talking about like twenty three inch wheels. He was like, "This thing is a chariot, a chariot for ladies and gentlemen." I'm like, I was cringing when he said that. I was like, "Oh my God! Like who 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 talks like that? Who the hell talks like that?" Well, the British. Yes, I. I have I have family members that are British. They don't talk right. like that. So, like, you know, okay. I have a lot of British friends. They don't yeah. they don't talk like that. Oh. They don't. Okay. Um, uh, like none. Actually, I, there's British. one. There's one British. There's one British yeah, person I know British? that does talk like that. Yeah. My mom's stepdad's from England. He's 81. He does not talk like that. <laughs> he doesn't talk like that. But um. But it was just like in. I saw it. I saw the leaked photo. I was like, man, the back end of that thing is just heinous. And then I saw them. They revealed it all, and I was like, okay, it looks better. Again, like it's growing on me. I yeah. still don't like it. I st- it's to me. It's, it kind of reminds me of the new M3 and M4 and the four series and all that. I hated that grill mm-hmm. when they revealed the car. I still hate it, but I'm not bothered by it. 
I've seen enough. I'm like, I'm used to it. I still would not buy that car for that sole reason. But yeah. and that's a good way of putting it. You hate it, but you're not bothered by it. And yeah, that makes a lot of sense because there are a lot of cars design language with cars that I hate and I'm bothered by it still. But then there are some where I'm just I don't like it. I'm not bothered by it. Mm -hmm. I just don't like it. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, you know, I think it's, it's, you know, range, it's never revolutionary. You know what I mean? No, Even, not, I'd say the most revolutionary a, one was the L405, but it still it, wasn't. But it wasn't. It wasn't. Exactly. And it's, you know, Jeep, mm -hmm. right? Um, the Grand Cherokee, they do revolutionary changes. Mm -hmm. Right, and the new one, like, right? I mean, it's 10 to 12 it's years is a lifespan, yeah. But yeah, they've they each new Grand Cherokee is a revolutionary mm -hmm. change, right? Where higher end brands like Lander Porsches, the, the best 911 evolutionary change, um, little by little, maybe at some point they drop they went from air cooling to water cool, or was it no, yeah, air cooling yeah. to water cooling. Right, because technology changed, so they made a massive change in it in the soul of the car, and that might be in every twenty-year thing because technology has changed. Mm -hmm. Like you just said, from the L three twenty-two to the four hundred five, right? Did I get that was ten, yeah, that's correct. Yeah, it was ten years. The L three twenty-two was two thousand two, and then the L four hundred five was twenty twelve. Went on sale right. as a thirteen model year. Right, and so the math, the change in technology that mm -hmm. happened during the lifespans of those. Um, is why yeah they, they were a very different like the whole step ahead um you know slightly by by workhorse a little more you know posh mm -hmm. um but yeah, yeah finish your thoughts on that yeah i think it, it, it's it's just yeah i the design of it it's it's still you look at you look at the new one it's like that's a range rover there's no question what it is and the front right. end still looks very similar to the 405 yeah. And from the side, it looks very similar. That's a good thing. They're yes. very simple. They're very elegant. They're very minimalist. That's what they've always been about. Yes. But the back end is such a radical departure. So different. I just, I don't hate it. Yeah. Actually, no, I do hate it. But yeah. again, it'll I'm be, not bothered by. I'm not bothered yeah. by it. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what it's, what it is in person. Um, exactly. So even well, like uh, with me, real quick, yeah. the Defender. I mean, I own one. And when that came out, I liked it, but it, it just it just didn't look right. I liked how it looked, but it just did not look right. And then I it looked a little small and dainty in like all the press photos. And then when I saw one in person, I was like, holy shit, this thing's yeah. fucking massive. It, it's, it's, it's the it same platform as all the other ones, but it's it's got the bigger tires on it. You know, it, it, it it's it, it's a big car right and that that's what like sold it for me i was like i always when that came i was like yeah i want one but yeah, there's still some things and then when i saw it in person i'm like yeah take my money um but it it yeah it's um it's interesting so i guess what do you want to talk about uh regarding this well let's talk the drivetrain first yeah so let me go I'm find here. this real quick so, um so for those of you who are familiar so land rover range rover sorry range rover was the first suv to offer permanent four-wheel drive back mm -hmm. in the late 80s they were the first one to figure out that system jeep had a part-time four-wheel drive system um then they were the second one after the range Rover to come up with a full-time four-wheel drive system full-time meaning you could drive four-wheel drive year-round drive pavement no matter what without destroying your drivetrain uh range rover was the first if i haven't said that enough times yeah they that were. was the one of the biggest things it, for that vehicle. Actually, hold on. They were also the first to do ABS in an SUV. On, yeah, ABS. And on. Uh, air suspension as well. They were electronically yeah. controlled air, air, air ride. Yeah. For SUVs. For SUVs. For SUVs. Because I think the first right. car with ABS was the S-Class Mercedes. I have no idea. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. But I think, again, I, I think it was that or Volvo. Volvo, well, I know Volvo they did the three, three the, point, the three point seat belt. And, and airbags, I believe. I don't know. I'm not, I'm not sure. Sure. that might be, but yeah, regardless, it, does. it say, doesn't matter. They did something for safety first. Right. Just, yeah. So, so intelligent anyways, drive line. So, let's talk that. So now Range Rover for the first time ever has not allowed you, but is disconnecting the front drive axles 
while you're driving above uh i do you want me to tell you i have it right yeah, here yeah it's below 160 kilometers which is roughly 100, 100 miles, miles. An and it's a, in, above, above 35 20, kilometers which above. is 21 miles an hour so above 35 kilometers an hour mm -hmm. and below 160. 160 versus or the american one was what 20 21 and 100. and 100 so that's basically your day-to-day -day driving mm -hmm. now when i first heard this i was freaking out because i was like whoa, whoa, whoa what the hell because I drive fast and reckless a lot. <laughs> okay. And so when I'm flying down the road and it's wet out, you know, as much as I understand how the laws of physics work, I also understand that when I see water that's standing still on the highway or standing still on the road or crossing the road, right? I know not to let off the gas. I know to lean into the throttle a little bit to ensure the traction control is working at full speed and my front wheels will help pull me through while the back wheels are pushing in order to optimize my grip to maintain the speed I'm going at. Yes, slowing down will be a safer bet, but whatever. Now, my initial thoughts were, I'm not gonna have that security anymore. I'm gonna be driving a rear wheel drive vehicle. And I was like, what the hell? So I started messaging um, the Facebook groups and I found out some very interesting things. And we don't know all the technical specs yet. Um, that's more to come. I've been trying to talk to some people, but they don't. They don't. I have, I, you know, I have an engineer friend okay. at Land so, Rover. I will, I'm going to have to ask him. Okay. So some right now, so here's the working theory and it's on the defender. So we should actually know. Here's the working theory. It works. As, if it works, there's two, two ways that it could engage four wheel drive permanently permanently when the wipers are on so when it's raining out mm -hmm. it could know because if it's below three degrees celsius it engage a four-wheel drive stays on mm -hmm. at all speeds right right so if the wipers are on it might be intelligent enough because i think i think you said mazda has this yeah system. mazda does that because mazda's all-wheel drive kicks in the wipers are on it, uh, it also right. like y'all sensors yeah. like how, so, how much lean and also like traction well, control y'all sensors and lights. are too late lights as well if right. the lights are on so but if the wipers are on it knows it's wet so it mm -hmm. should be four wheel drive all the time that would be great and then there's no issue right or or and this is how the diffs work if you push the throttle it it starts activating the train response mm -hmm. so you can push the throttle down you'll see the center diff for example start locking up a little bit so if you're pushing the throttle down maybe it'll re-engage the drive wheels right the front drive wheels and if you think about it from a stamp like at least the way i'm thinking about it yeah that would make sense and then that would eliminate the cons you know the concern i have um i still don't like it but i understand why they're doing mm -hmm. it now and then this morning just to finish this point i was thinking yeah they were the first ones to figure out permanent four-wheel drive okay they, they did that better than anybody okay um they're going to do this system better than anybody else could do it either. Right. That's, that's just it. Like, it's just it. Like, if, if there's any company that said, guys, don't worry, we are going to disconnect the front drive train to give you more efficiency by 30%. Um, but don't worry, you, you still good. You still driving a Range Rover. It, you know, what's interesting. I, I, I'd be like, yeah, all right. What's interesting. So I found out, like Ford, for example, they have like their own like terrain response system. I think the Bronco, yeah, they call it know, like the goat you mode. You know the story behind that, right? And how much they paid Land Rover for it. Yeah, they, they had to pay him royalties to use it. Yeah, a couple billion. Was it a couple? Something like that. And I know um, uh, JLR sued the Volkswagen Group for doing the same thing, but they recently settled. They settled that. They didn't say what. Yeah, they settled because it's like. Because it is their yeah. patented technology. It is, but then everybody has it now. Now, now it's the program is the passage of technology, not having a dial and icon. Right. And so, that was an issue with the VW group. Well, that right. was, I think that was there. That was their whole thing. I didn't so look into was, it a whole lot, but yeah, yeah. For this straight up, when they sold them, they just kept kept stuff mm -hmm. from from them. And they have um, to pay them for it. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, because they got sued. So um but I don't know, man. Like, so it'll be interesting. I'm kind of curious to see what happens with that. But on the Defender, you said one, not all models have that disconnecting. So no, thing. that, you know, you're in Canada. 
you know, I'm here in the US, every defender sold here has the traditional four wheel drive system. The disconnecting drive line is only on the diesel models that are that have been sold since 2021 model year in Europe awesome. and all over the world. Because it would, the first year defender, the, the, they had two diesel or it was one diesel engine with two different outputs, D200 and D240. It was the Ingenium four cylinder turbo diesel. Yeah. And then for 21, they dropped those engines. They went to the new straight six Ingenium mild hybrid diesel. And all right. of those straight six diesels come with intelligent drive, uh, intelligent all wheel drive. Okay. So all the V8 defenders, all of the uh, gasoline or petrol powered defenders, as well as I'm the um, uh, P400E, the plug in hybrid, they all have the old fashioned four wheel drive system that's always on. So I wonder what's going to happen with the 22s. 22 it's the same the, the they're they're all in the, now they're in 23 model here really? they the, yeah are they still doing the same yeah i mean as far as i know like, the only I ones with intelligent drive line, drive line to, i bet this is like i could see this drive line just being the standard drive line now throughout Land Rover. really it's it's basically what this is this is the jaguar all-wheel drive system that they're just on, putting in on, land Rover. Hold, hold on hold on hold on hold on Don't just, no 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 no. The same technology. No, it's not. <laughs> it's land. Okay, what was land? What was Jaguar doing with all wheel drive before? So they. So, well, After. I'm talking. I'm talking stuff from, from like 2013 to now. Jaguar's instinctive all wheel drive. It's always rear wheel drive until it loses grip or you know right. certain conditions. And that's with most. All, that's with most all-wheel drive systems, mm -hmm. uh, albeit for front-wheel drive first or rear-wheel drive, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's most, yeah, how they all work, right? But let's not, so th just what I'm saying is like, we don't want to be saying like, oh yeah, this is Jaguar interfering yeah. with Land Rover. No, it's not, not at no, all. No, this is Land Rover just, it's, they're just adjusting how they're doing their four-wheel drive system um, due to, market demand and what they you know what um like or no not even that it's just due to technology increasing and becoming better and like, emissions that's another right? thing if too they found a way to to um to lower efficiency or incre improve increase efficiency, it, yeah. uh, lower the co2 or whatever um and they're like but we can still give you the safety and security of, of you know for all wheel drive, right? Um, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't say that's, that's, you know. Right. It's essentially how all, it's essentially how all wheel drive systems work. And that's why I think they're calling it now all wheel drive versus right. four wheel drive. Yes, it's how it works. But I, I wouldn't say they said, uh, let's go look at what we've been yeah. doing over at Jaguar. Yeah, right. right. But, Cause like in the XJ, you have low traction launch, mm -hmm. not in Jaguar. No, that's Land Rover. Right, so they just they just you know they just they just yeah, went, yeah. they all the engineers develop the same stuff anyway. Yeah, I, just I like it's, <laughs> yeah. But you know the thing is, and of course everyone's definition of four wheel drive and all wheel drive is different. For me, like all wheel drive is, you know, either it could be full time, usually part time, no, you know, two speed transfer case or anything like that, and it's you know either reactive or in some cases proactive like mazda like i said the wipers are on in a mazda it's proactive and it's right. all-wheel drive turns on for me four-wheel drive it's got to have you know locking diffs a low range trend or two-speed transfer case and whether it's part-time or not it doesn't matter so for me my definition this would still be a four-wheel drive because it still has the diff locks it still has the two-speed transfer case but it's not always on I yeah um, again just yeah, me. We, we could get into that. You're right. Uh, I think all wheel drive is purely for um, it being more marketable mm -hmm. to. I don't know the majority of people who buy buy Land Rovers in your area, but here it's a lot of fucking. Oh, damn. No, I uh, said swearing's fine. This is right, an explicit it's podcast. A lot of Chinese folks. It's a lot of Chinese yeah. folks, right? And so mm -hmm. you know when they hear all wheel drive, right? Miss, you know they're thinking oh great safety security and always and it's more in line with the Ger with the german brands mercedes mm -hmm. ben or mercedes bmw even lexus to that standpoint right they hear all-wheel drive and they're 
you know, so it's designed for the, that market. Mm -hmm. um, I see that because that's like, you know, not without China. Them, but, yeah, it's the biggest car market in the world. I mean, China right. is so it's you, just, you you right. you are not going to succeed if you don't sell in China. It's it's like it's like all the people who and oh, you're a defender owner. Like, oh my god, lordy, do they cry in that group in those groups a lot? God bless you all. But like the people yeah. are like, why couldn't Land Rover make a real defender? Because they wanted to make money, dumbass. Yeah, Jesus. It's like they, any they just if they made what the uh, Grenadier is, mm -hmm. they wouldn't have sold any. And the company okay. could have, Land Rover is not a company that can afford to take a lot of misses right now. All right. Right. They're not profit. They're not profiting big numbers. They're a very small company. Mm -hmm. They're one fatal mistake, like a bad launch away from possibly close, like being sold again. And the yeah. reason the reliability is shit is because they keep getting sold to different companies right. and they have no right. long-term. And when I say long-term, I mean something longer than 20 years. Right. Yeah. Um. As an as a owner, and so you know, yeah, you, you can't. Yes, the, the def, you know, um. So that's why they couldn't make something like the old Defender because yeah. it wouldn't have sold. No one, no, right. exactly. Enthusiasts, enthusiasts don't keep companies afloat. They don't. Right. Now, they have the loud. They have the loudest mouth, but yeah, they, right, but. You know, and you know, there's they try to please everyone, and you yeah. can't please everyone. And I think, like, for me, I love the Defender, my new one. It is such an amazing car, it still has some of that go anywhere, do anything like, character that the old one has. Yeah, but it's, it's not the old one, it's not, it's at not all the old because it's not 1995 anymore. And bottom line is, and let's get back to the new Ranger. Yeah, the new Defender, it's more, it's it, it, it it's, it's more capable, it's more comfortable. Um, and it's a better it's a better vehicle all around than the old one, and that's just it is. how it is. So it doesn't um, okay. have. The, let's let's, let's, let's get, get in. into the. Um, what else you want to talk about? All right, so we talked about the drivetrain. Mm -hmm. Okay, engines. Let's, the what? Engines? Is that something uh, you want yeah, to talk yeah. about? Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the engine. All right, so I will but kind of now, go ahead. Okay, so you don't like the BMW engine. Land Rover has a bit of an icky pass with the BMW engine being mm -hmm. one of the worst reliable engines they've had. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, there's actually, uh, I spoke on my live stream, there was a guy who, who makes it, the engines um, with, um, he works at the factory over in, in England. Um, so I should connect, I talk to him it's like it'd be great to connect with him talk to him more about the engines because he actually makes it so yeah. he'll have more info than all of us um but the new 4.4 liter twin turbo not excited about losing the supercharger i think the mm -hmm. five liter it was an absolute beast it was loved it i had engine. that i had that in my disco four yeah. not you supercharged could, naturally aspirated version loved you it. could tune it it could take a beating um it didn't like Compared to the other engines on JLR's lineups, it did not have a ton of issues. Um, yeah. What issues? Timing chains. It, but the newer ones are better. It, the timing it's chains were plagued. So like with the LR4, the timing chains were a real issue 2010 to 2012. LR4 is, what year is that? So the LR, that was a disco for, 2010 was the first year for the Ooh. LR4. Right, we're not talking about the five liter from the 20. We're talking about the five liter in the current. Like the, It's the same engine. But they've been, ten, yeah. Just, I, they've I know, using... but that that was ten years ago. They've yeah, they've improved, improved it. it. Yeah, yeah. So that, like, let's talk about the latest, the latest version of it. It's pretty good. I mean, I think they still. I think some of them still have like the crossover pipe issues with the coolant, but that's not a huge. I mean, that's a that's not that expensive. It, right. That failed multiple times on my old one, but it wasn't. You know, it was maybe like four hundred dollars, five hundred dollars, so, from a private you know mechanic right but, yeah and i, I wouldn't four or five hundred bucks i would not calculate in, that as a real big. quick with the timing chains that was something that the people that had the timing chains that went bad were the people that followed the fifteen thousand mile oil, oil change intervals oh, really? and then if you were if you didn't if you followed the you know, if you did not follow that and did it like a normal person every five to seven thousand miles you wouldn't have timing chain issues mm -hmm. why is that I don't know enough about how engines work to understand that. Same here, but they just, it was a, it was a problem. I mean, a lot of people had that problem. And even the V6 cars 
will have timing chain issues if you don't take care of it. And even I'm, I'm sure anything, even the new V anything will have issues if you don't take care of it. I do want to talk about the rely the quality of that N63 engine from BMW. Yeah, because like, I was gonna like jump into some BMW forums and start reading up on how well that engine has held up. Um, well, let me tell you this: I have a neighbor. He has, or he actually just got rid of it a few months ago. He yeah. got a seven series. Uh, he leased it. He had it three years. It was like a 2016, I think, is when they went to the current gen. He got the first year for that. His He had the 750i with the N63. That thing needed a new engine two and a half years after he got it. All under warranty. He had like he had like 28,000 miles on it and needed a new engine. Okay. And so, no, the problem with, with that is it was just your neighbor. Was just well... But so like are, that's what I'm saying. It's like okay, yes, yes, and I'm sure there's people with the with the engine that I have who have blown it and needed. Oh it. yeah, right. Yeah. Um, so I other know. issues, fuel like, pump issues plague that engine. The high pressure fuel pump, fuel injector issues. It, there's a huge battery drainage issue with that engine, as yeah, well as the it battery le- won't be the same. Like, but then that's, that was, no. That, yeah, because that would, like some of these things will be BMW specific. Mm-hmm. The fuel system lander was going to keep doing. All right. right. And then the other one that was a huge issue, uh, it leaks oils. It leaks oil leaks everywhere, especially from I've like the that. valve cover. That's a yeah. big one. And some um, have turbo issues, but that's yeah. not as big as the other problems. So turbo right. issues, you could, you know, whatever. So, and, you know, it'd be interesting to note, and if any of you, watching maybe let us know when a company sources an engine exactly what are they sourcing because it's not like they just take the engine from you know they take the engine and like pop it into a new vehicle they'll take the engine and then what type of changes modifications are they doing that's going to be more brand specific right because they might know it's like okay this engine is solid here are the problem points so let's do better head gaskets let's make sure we're using a different fuel system um, so they might be doing all of that. Um, so those are all the like the questions that like I've been thinking about. Right. Yeah. And the, the other thing is that the kind of is interesting here, and I'm just looking it up to make sure that I am correct. Mm-hmm. Um, the so the last time they had a 2018 update with this the N63 engine. Um, this I want the 550i. Or yeah, the the current what's the current one the the g g well that'll that'll do it the g14 the m550 i that produces um it it produces the exact same amount of power in like the m850 i in the 550 the m550 i this engine produces the exact same amount of power um 400 or 530 ps 523 brake horsepower mm-hmm. and 750 newton meters of torque, which is 553 pound feet. It that is the exact same is the BMW M850i, the uh, M the M750i, and the you know it's the exact same numbers. So yeah. I'm sure they do. I mean, I'm sure like electronics are going to be different, of course, for Land Rover, but it's it's, it's that engine yeah. came straight from BMW's parts bin. Right, but like uh, change your head gas is not going to change anything. Change no. your like all the things that you mentioned, the problem issues, like fixing those is not going to change power. It's just going to fix reliability. Right, right. So I don't know. We will see. Um, we'll see. Yeah. We will see. It's There's a car. It's not even out yet. It's not even out. We're speaking yeah, of this. We will see. Obviously, uh, next was... real quick next year. Of course, I've talked about this before. Um. I'm going to England and I'm going to the Land Rover uh, factory at Sully Hall where this thing's being built. So I'm going to be watching these things roll off the production line. And I also have a full day uh, Land Rover experience at the factory as well. I put my name down to drive the Defender, of course, because that's what I have. I, I'm sure these are going to be there at that time. So I might have to try to take one of these off road. But one thing I want to talk about that's interesting is the plug-in hybrid. I hope it's better than the well, obviously it'll be better than their current one because their current yeah. one sucks. 
Yeah. It's hard. And I feel so bad for people who bought it. Like because they got it has the four cylinder and it's got the same engine as my defender, which is fine in the defender. It doesn't it weighs about the same as the Range Rover, but when you have you add all the batteries into the Range Rover, it adds a ton of weight and the car gets even heavier. And when the batteries are dead, you just have that four cylinder. It's just not enough power. They, <laughs> they, they aren't doing this now. They're they're doing the ingenium six cylinder <laughs> with the plug-in. Um look, their new system. Um the problem with the current system with anything that's battery powered from JLR is it was an afterthought. Yes, it was not designed. That's the problem. So it was just crap. It it's just yeah. Um so um their new one, they built it from the ground up. So they put proper room, they built the chassis to support the batteries, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and they even filed some patents um for battery design. I was just I was reading. Um, or chassis design for the for the um, the, the hybrid system, um, right? But that's um, yeah. So that I was impressed with that because it's cool. They're they it's double the range now, up to one hundred kilometers of EV power, up to which is insane for so. any plug-in hybrid car. I mean, most plug-in hybrid cars, are, yeah, they're they're like. You know, like 100 kilometers is 62 miles. Most yeah. like plug-in hybrid cars are like maybe between 20 and 35 miles, maybe oh, 40. Really? Yeah. Oh, wow. That's based on like what I've read, but I, I don't do a whole lot of research on like plug-in hybrids because like I don't oh, really care about oh, them. What? Yeah. I, but, I but that's so, usually what they are. They're not, they're just kind of like, if you need to go into a big city like London where you have a, you know, a charge for having an engine, you know, you just go in on full EV. But this, I mean, hold on. How does that work? How like, do they act? Uh, like, no. How how would they not charge you then? Well, if you go in on full EV, I how know a lot they of governments. Know what you're going in on. Well, the thing is, I think if you have a plug-in hybrid, because if it's can't a plug-in hybrid, they might work. It might reduce the fee. It's like using a carpool lane. Yeah. Here. Right, you, EVs can use carpool lane or hybrids can use carpool lane, but they have, you have to have a like your insurance gives you yeah. a sticker that you have to have in your thing, right? So you don't get pulled over. But going into a city, if like yeah, if you're if you're a hybrid, yeah, you'll be able to go in versus the full gas, you might get a ding. Is right. that what you mean? Yeah, and again, I don't live in a city where this stuff is a thing. It's all Europe. I'll have to ask some of my European friends that know yeah. way more about it than I do, but. Yeah, it's but I will say some more stuff about this um, a plug-in hybrid. So there's two versions. From what I can tell, there's only one coming to North America, and that's the P440e. There's also a P510e, which uses the 400 horsepower six-cylinder with an electric motor, so you get 510 horsepower and 700 newton meters of torque from the plug-in hybrid. Right. Now I assume the um, it doesn't really it doesn't say here. I can't, it doesn't say anything about the P440E. I would assume that's probably a 360 horsepower version of that engine. Um, and you get 440, you know, PS and 457 pound feet of torque, 620 Newton meters. Um, hey, and the, the, so they can reach up to, my correction, 140 kilometers an hour um, in terms of speed, the plug-in hybrids on EV alone. Mm -hmm. So that's almost 100. That's like 90 something miles an hour. Yeah, 87 miles. An 87. Hour. That's fast. Yeah. That's actually really good. Um, like, I, I don't like know. the idea of that. I like the idea of that. Um, it's just filling up for gas is such a waste of time, mm -hmm. in my opinion. Um, the three minutes that it takes me. Yeah. <laughs> Five minutes that it takes me. Um, however, I'm not ready for an EV anything yet. I'm like, not either. Technology's too new. It's too unreliable in terms of like it's not everywhere. Um, charging your car is a pain in the ass. Still, there's just there's too many negatives that oh, right, that, right. Um, so I'm definitely nowhere near ready for that. And that's um, also kind of is a thing. It's also kind of where we live. Like here in the U.S., Canada, like the infrastructure just is not there, and the market isn't quite there. Where's the infrastructure anywhere in the world? That that's true. It's not. It's too. It's new. not exactly. It's you can't. You can't. You can't. And it's growing fast. But now, an interesting thing. Um, when I did a podcast uh, 
one of my previous guests, she was telling me that she, she's from England and they right. recently have this fuel crisis. I'm not yeah. sure if you're familiar with that, but yeah, she yeah, said that. during that time, EVs have just complete, like they blew up. Like it, no one was concerned about like everyone just like all of a sudden it was like a light switch. Like they're everyone's interested in electric cars and everyone's like now buying like electric cars. Yeah. Of course they have a ban 2030. They can't sell ice anymore. I have a feeling that will get quietly rolled back at some point. Cause that's how like all governments are. They have these outrageous claims and, yeah, and they can't just, realistically meet it. It'll get like, quiet. Wait a minute, back. we can't actually do that. <laughs> but she was, I mean, in, in, you know, she reviews cars. She re- reviews a lot of electric cars, and it it, it, it kind of shocked her as well. Um, but real quick, another thing, I'm just kind of looking at this with the the plug in hybrid. The, so the new P510e will be. It, you can only get it in the short wheelbase, right. and the towing capacity takes a hit. Twenty five hundred kilograms. Not sure what that is in pounds. Um, normally it's 3,500 yeah. kilograms, which I know is 7,700 pounds. Yeah. Cause if you're towing, you definitely like, once again, technology is nowhere near where it should be. If you need a proper workhorse, right. Um, despite what Ford says, yeah. if you're, if you're a serious tower, you need diesel. You do mm-hmm. not need a brand new tech on battery that right. has rings. Like that's just. In another thing, interesting the batter if you get the plug-in hybrid you can still get a full-size spare tire okay that was the issue i had with the build it wasn't nothing i couldn't read now i built it on canada because i figured mm-hmm. you'd do the state so it'd be like oh it'd be interesting to see where the glitches are i ended up going on the states one to take a look at stuff afterwards because i couldn't find information about a full-size spare i think it was it was only the... saying tire repair kits and i was Maybe... like oh, i want i need to know i looked at yours and we'll we'll do that in a minute I think you got okay. the 23 inch wheel. I wonder if they do a full size 23 inch wheel. Maybe not. No, bro. I was looking at all the standard options and no, no, I, I did the tool. Oh, I can't remember what size wheel it did. I actually have it but, pulled up. I can look um, at it real quick before. I, we... Cause I was looking at all the other ones. I like, I was looking under standard options for the base model and I couldn't see anything about a, a full size spare being available. They had it in there. They, they had it in there. Um, let's see if I can pull up go into my history and i also wanted like is that an option with the seven seater not sure that uh that that might be interesting actually um and and that's another i'm probably gonna bring that up seven seats is now an option on the long wheel i think that's i think that's cool and i think they're and they we'll see how they did them um, and we'll see how much bigger the because it's gonna be big, man. Yeah. And like the Range Rover is already big, like the long wheelbase one. Yeah. So and this is even bigger. So it'll be inter- like it might be too big. Who knows? Um. But yeah, no, it'll be interesting. I was I, I was I was speaking to a friend, um, a guy I know, and uh, I was asking him if the twenties are gonna fit on that new one. He he's he doesn't know yet. Right. Yeah, because base is twenty one. Which is a right because I was like, I want to equip it with 20s, but uh, he's going to the LA audio show, so he's like, Oh, I see no person will know if there's gonna have to be a workaround, mm-hmm. um, like there was for the uh Defender to get smaller things, they had to adjust the brakes, mm-hmm. the yeah. The rear caliper, I think the rear calipers were yeah. too so big. it'll be interesting to see if what's the take on that, mm-hmm. but um, but then again, it's a Range Rover. I mean, you're one of the very, very few people that bought a Range Rover and take it off road. You know, yeah, I'm, you know, like that's the thing. No one that Range. buys these are gonna. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. There's lots of people. Are you in the L405 groups? No, I'm not. I'm not. Okay, join those. Take a look. There's so many people who go off roading with them. Yeah. 20s, nice altering tires. Yeah. So many. How yeah. I need to do that. And another thing, interesting, kind of going back to the seven seats. It was always the Discovery. If you needed a seven seat Land Rover, you get the Discovery. Right. And, and the thing is. It, 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 it's still true to this day. You can fit seven adults in a Discovery. And I think there it's designed to fit like a 90th percentile. So if you're like six foot two and under, you should have no problem being in the third row of a Discovery. Now, hold on. Who makes those claims? Land Rover. Yeah, that's But my here's problem. the thing. I've, that's my, if I'll go sit, like I could, I'll be near a dealership today. I'll go sit in the back of the Discovery and call you if they have a seven seater one and tell you how uncomfortable I am. I'm 5'11". Bro, I'm, I just, 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 just 
the marketing BS that companies give you, I just, you, yeah, it's just, no, I've sat in so many seven seat car and like. You're right. In most seven seat cars. Yeah. You cannot like my dad drives an Audi Q7 and that thing has a third row. I'm not very tall either. I'm five foot nine. I cannot fit in the third row of that thing in his Q7. But the, my old LR4, I could yeah. fit in the third row that no issues at all. The discovery is the same way. One of my best friends who was like six foot four, mm-hmm. I had him in the back of the discovery and he was like, wow, I, I can fit back uh, here. Yeah. Um, yes. It, and the thing was, I do like the seating. They they've raised the rear seat, the seven, the third, the row. stadium they've seating. Yeah. A little bit. That's, that was a discovery. Thing. Yeah. They, they brought, yeah. They brought back. Yeah. The it's like, it's like Apple. Let's yeah. Bring back all the shit we took away because we were idiots. Yeah. The lander was like, oh, let's bring all this shit back. Yeah. Uh, so that's cool. Yeah. Like we'll give them props. They're working on it. And the trunk space actually looked usable still mm-hmm. behind the third row, which is usually not the case. No. LR4. Other, unless you buy like a Suburban. Right. Right. Yeah. LR4 had no space behind the third row and same with the Discovery. Right. It, it, it's in, you know, you have to choose, hey, do I want, yeah. do, you, do I want to haul people or do I want to haul crap? Yeah. You know, so. you can't have both at the same time. Um, real quick, again, I don't know how much time you have, but um, I do kind of want to bring up some new tech technology stuff. Obviously, yeah, yeah, Pro, the Meridian sound systems. Thank God they're still using Meridian. I was yeah, kind of worried they'd go to someone else. Uh, signature sound system up to like 35 speakers and 1600 watts. It's actually less powerful than the current one, right? By 100 watts. 16. Yeah. Which who cares? You're not going to hear yeah, it. Yeah, 100 watts. No but one's going to notice. But it has this crazy noise canceling where there are speakers yeah, in I'm each so of the headrests. For that. I love in, that idea. Um, noise cancellation is, uh, and it's good that they're doing biometric stuff like that. Like Mercedes really on their latest S class, the biometric stuff that they're doing in that is absolutely nuts. Um, so it's really cool that Range Rover is doing some of that. Um, because like for me, like I got my winters on right now and for the next few months, I'll just, I hear my tires compared to the all seasons that are way quieter. Um, so like I just pick up on like little stuff like that. So the noise cancellation, I'm really excited to see how good that works. And it's interesting because they currently do noise cancellation um, in Land Rover. It's the Meridian uh, cabin correction, I think is what they're, is the term that they use to, mm-hmm. to call it. It's pretty discreet. Um, it's not I I, that I noticeable. I have that option. It, I don't think all, that was all Meridian sounds ever since they, Ever since JLR yeah. started using Meridian in 2012, oh, really? they Evo, they've had all of that. Then it's shit. Yes. My dad's so then, Q7. There we go. My it's, dad's Audi Q7 has bows, and you can turn on and off the noise canceling. And yeah. the difference is almost none. Right. But then again, that's playing through the speakers. You know, oh. it just doesn't, you, you can't, it's, you, noise canceling only works the best when you have headphones. Right. You can't. You can't so, Moving it up here could be a big difference exactly, maker, but it won't be the it won't be a headphone difference maker. No, but it'll be a lot better than the speakers down or yeah. you know. So and it's Meridian. I mean, nothing Meridian does is shit. I mean, I have the base Meridian in my Defender. It's not the surround. I wish I had the surround, but I got an S. I couldn't get that, but I was still able to get the did, well, the did, upgrade for that because the standard audio system sucks. Yeah. Um, did you not order your thing? from factory or did you just buy off the lot i ordered my defender yeah was it not available at the time well you on the defender s you could not get meridian surround oh, you could okay. only get you could only get it came standard with the land rover sound system with six speakers and you could pay more to get the 11 speaker meridian which is the base meridian in basically every other land and that's rover. that's the one you have the and that's the one i have now my mom's discovery has the meridian surround the 825 watt which i believe is the same one that you have yeah insanely good mm-hmm. i mean it's it's an ins- it's really i mean and hers is an hse luxury so it, it came standard with it but if you got an hse um the meridian surround it was like 800 dollars extra yeah and it's, it's like weird. it's a no-brainer it's so and like it's weird because i have like there's the meridian one and then there's like dolby and then the dolby like, and the gt there's like different yeah. And I'm like, when, why they all, the other ones all suck. What are they used for? When would I want those other ones? Maybe it's like if you're listening to like certain something you want, 
the other options, but I've just never really understood why they give you those. So it's different surround settings, obviously. So I can walk you through it. So obviously you have stereo, no surround. Yeah. And then you have uh, the Dolby Pro Logic 2, which is that gives you some more bass. It's kind of, it's more of like your home theater surround sound system. Okay, so that's DTS what is kind of similar to that. It's a little bit less bass. It's a little bit more like kind of focused on, you know, precision sound. And so then you different have different types of music. You might want to slightly adjust those. Yes, if you were like maybe an ex- an extreme audiophile. Okay. However, the Meridian Tri Field surround. What that does is it blends the center channel and the side channel. So you're like completely like enveloped and surrounded in sound, not without trying to be like, not like marketing bullshit, but that's, that's how it works. Yeah. Yeah, I think it sounds the best. I I, I don't, I only like in my mom's discovery, I set up, I did all the sound settings. Like don't just leave it on Meridian. Sounds the best. And you can hear it. Yeah. You can hear a difference. I hear you on that, man. It's uh, like you told me, you're like, yo, stop using Bluetooth and plug your phone in. Yeah. But they used to hate plugging my phone in because yeah. it was just, and then I plugged it in. I was like, oh my God, I forgot it how sounds better. better it sounds. Yeah. And it's also right. another interesting thing is Meridian has what they call digital dither shaping. It takes all um, digital audio formats and converts it to a common format to make it sound like a CD. Um, I think it works pretty well, but it mm-hmm. doesn't make it sound like a CD. Uh, mm-hmm. It makes Bluetooth sound good yeah um compared to like a normal car yeah um usb sounds really good and actually surprisingly sirius xm satellite radio sounds phenomenal through that yeah that's uh they've really stepped up that yeah. that quality but actually when, when, when sirius has reception the reception yeah. Just, yeah at least for me it's like if i'm driving between buildings yeah kind of like downtown but in another but, interesting but, thing is the range yeah. rover it's they, they didn't really talk about it in the press release that much, but it is here in the U.S. It's coming, it's going to be the first JLR product with Sirius XM 360L technology where you can kind of like make your own like channels and stuff. And if you have, if you pay for Sirius XM, you get 360L if your car is equipped with it. And I really hope that will be available as a software update. Maybe my car can get it because that will be really cool. Oh, um, that's cool. Um, yeah. What do you want to, let's. Uh-huh. I'll leave it up to you. What do you want to discuss next? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. So, like, lots of charging dock uh, docks, which is cool. Four zone, obviously. Mm-hmm. Climate control, which is money. Um, you know, I think there will be more colors and stuff. Materials. I couldn't do any two-tone stuff that looked nice. Yeah. Uh, two-tone leather, like what I have in the sport. Um, so, I, I'm sure stuff like that will just come over the next year or two. Um, yeah, and I'm but- surprised. Because I was a little here's... surprised here. Like I wanted my seats in two tone. Yeah, that's a little. Sh- and I think maybe because of, like all the, all the shortages that they're going yeah, on. I'm right like, now. it could just be that there's just a shortage right now. So, like, it felt like the options list was low. Mm-hmm. Now I expect an autobiography. Yeah, I I had a few more options on the sport. Mind you, it was near the end of its life cycle. Right. And it was also post post the world shutting down. Yeah. So and another pre- thing profile. interesting um that I thought like trim levels. I don't know how it is in Canada, but here in the US there's base SE and then mm-hmm. autobiography and then first edition and then SV. There's no HSE, there's no like super the supercharged trim levels completely gone. Um, and um here in North America, we never got the Vogue trim level. That was never a thing. Well, but, Vogue is just what the full size one is called over there, no? But it's a trim level. It's an actual trim level of, of Range Rover. So they have like the base Range Rover and then Range Rover Vogue, Range Rover Supercharged, Range Rover. Oh, really? But everyone called it the like, the basically Vogue. everyone in Europe got the Vogue trim level. And that's kind of how the whole thing started out. That's why it was so called like the Vogue. There was just the base autobiography uh, first edition. And then SV was not configurable yet. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because SE is the base. Okay. And then, but yeah, there's no HSE, I don't, which is weird. I don't, um, um, unless that might come later on. Maybe. Oh, another interest. This is Dynamic Response Pro. If you if you look into that, that's got the 48 volt anti lock yeah, system. The uh, handling thing. I'm like really curious to see how that thing whips around corners at speed. Yeah. Because 
That was one of the first things I noticed when I took out a full size a few months ago. Where is it? Um, it's like was how half, much yeah. heavier and whatnot it felt in the steering and everything. Um, now I can't remember. I think it was just like a like a standard HSC model or something. Which those don't have because, like I, well, I know we, when you're when we did the live stream a few days ago, we talked about how all the supercharged cars have a hydraulic anti-roll system mm -hmm. and it's only on the v8 supercharged cars none of the other ones have it so um, yeah no i'm really curious to see how this works in terms of keeping the body roll under control and everything that's um and also uh is, while it's here on the same page the uh, four-wheel steering is really interesting yeah no, that's 7.3 that, degrees of rear steering angle no no What's that compared to? Like, what's Mercedes offer? What what does that I, well, else offer? I know the I EQS. The EQS Mercedes has like up to like ten degrees, and I think the new S class has like up to ten degrees. Okay, but, so maybe seven is good for an SUV. Yeah, I mean, it, really anything is anything is good, but seven is pretty substantial. It certainly seems like compared to um, a lot of other companies. Um, yeah, it, it's some most. Electronic air suspension with adaptive dynamics and twi twin valve damping. Um, that's not really new. I think they were talking about how the adaptive dynamics are new, the new adaptive right. dampers, which. Yeah, like that's, see what I mean? They're like, but it's the, the same stuff they, they've used. Old. They've so had like, that. Or if there's stuff in it that's new, why, why is that not being explained? But it, I think the twin valve damping is new. I yes, don't that recall is. that. Um, but it's still the same adaptive, you know, damper. It's not Magneride, which is, I mean, I, you know, I always talk about how great Magneride adaptive dampers are, the, mm -hmm. the um, magnetic fluid in it, because it gives you the biggest delta between comfort and, and performance. I mean, you can go from being like, I drove the Cadillac CT5 V Blackwing, you know, yeah. and that thing, I said, when, when I was talking about it, I said, I could put my grandmother in that. I could put my girlfriend in that. I could put my mother in that. You put it into comfort mode, it it rides floaty, it's really comfortable, it's really nice. And then when you put that thing in race mode, it stiffens up so much. It becomes not bone shattering, but yeah, you can feel literally everything. And sorry, what car is that? That was the Cadillac CT5 V hmm. Blackwing. So it's I like wonder America's if you feel M5. It more in cars because the Jaguar XJ FA, whatever the Jag that I have on the channel that I've reviewed. Mm -hmm. Um when I put it into a dynamic, I could really feel the yeah. change. When I put my sport into dynamic mode, like I can feel like the responsiveness, mm -hmm. but in terms of handling, like I need to be pushing it mm -hmm. to really feel, um, yeah, to feel that change versus where the car, uh, I could just, I could feel that change, like just, you know, going around town and everything. And I think that also has to do with the fact that you know, all the Land Rovers are on air suspension. Um, so that kind of already really makes it a lot softer because whereas like the Jaguar, which is the same, you know, adaptive dampers that they use on all the other ones, the same adaptive yeah. dampers, just because it's not on air. I think you get more, you feel more, you the get same more thing with the Cadillac more, as well. Yeah, yeah. That would make more sense. But um, yeah. Okay. What else? Paint we don't need to cover. Like there's paint. Um, I don't know. Like, I guess we could talk about like design. I mean, we talked a bit about design. Interior. We didn't talk much about interior. I mean, other than setting honestly, I think the, the interior is fine. It's subtle. Yeah. It's it's not busy. Um, they didn't completely screw it up. Um, you know, they said floating screen enough times to sell me on it, right? So they hit the they hit they they, they knew what they were doing there with that language. Yeah. Um, I think it'll look better in person, right? Um, I'll never forget the first time I saw Mercedes. And I saw it in their in their uh, I can in one of their cars, and the just the big screen just popped there. Mm -hmm. And I was like, "What happened?" I'm like, "Can you?" And I'm like, "Can you move it?" Yeah, but, uh, it is nice how the screen is curved. Yeah, I think that helps, right? Um, one thing I'm actually I just saw this, and it was in like you know with you know how you have like the numbers at the at the end of it, like in your footnotes. Um, mm -hmm. Range Rover HSE. So they do, they, I haven't really looked at like the international configurators, but I guess there is an HSE 
and we're not getting it here in North America, at least initially. Yeah. Yeah. And initially it, we might just, you know, just it, new vehicle shortage. Mm -hmm. So there's a really good chance that, um, you know, and maybe there was even stuff they probably maybe want to talk about that they're mm -hmm. like, that they could have pulled. And that could be a headlight thing as yeah. well. That might be like, uh, you know, that might be why we're not getting the good headlights. Mm -hmm. They're like, we can't afford, we can't go into another market with those headlights yet. We don't, right. We can barely make ours. Um, I do like how the air suspension lowers now for um, on the highway. It lowered by 10 millimeters. You know, they used to do that. The uh, I, I thought I, they all should have done that. Like I the, the P38, the, like the, back in the late 90s, back early. Yeah. yeah, it had like when you. Mine does. Or at least the, there's, I haven't ever read documentation that it's lowering. For some reason, I think it that the, my old Disco 4 did it. I think my old Disco 4 did it, but it, I, if I can remember, the, that press release was so old, I haven't read it in years, but I, for some reason, I think I remember they said that the car, the Disco 4 at highway speeds will lower automatically, but it's, it was maybe, it was, I think it was like less than an inch, so you don't really feel it. In the light, in, no, you'll never feel it, but it's just, yeah, it's enough for when they're doing their wind tunnel experiments. Mm -hmm. It gives a significant reading that they yeah. can use for marketing. Um, uh, software, Pivi Pro, software over the air updates. Um, it's whatever. You know, that's... I don't understand. Nine mod oh, 69 yes. electronic control modules, more than on any previous model. Wow, that's a lot of... It's a lot of um, electronics in that car. Of course, it's a modern car, but... Um, what else do we have? I mean... Oh, the gauge cluster is big. It's got a 13.7 inch gauge cluster, which is bigger than everyone else, pretty much. Everyone else is like 12.3 inches. That's like the automotive industry standard for digital gauge cluster. Oh, really? Hey, um, the power assisted doors is kind of cool. Oh, yeah, I had that. I had that highlighted. Um, I don't remember uh, where that was. Um, it's a party trick. I mean, that's what it is. I mean, like. Well, OK, no, you don't have kids. No. Right. So, like, in fact, Julia, my daughter, was asking me, she's like, Can the next car we have open and close its doors for you? I'm like, Yeah, why not? <laughs> right. So, just because, like, you know, they get in and then they can have a button to close their own door. So, I don't yeah. have to do it. That's nice. And kids don't have big arms. Bingo. Um, kids don't have big arms. That's the problem. Unless they can make kids with big arms. Yeah. yeah. Bro, see, that's what I mean. Yes, it's a party trick. Like the parking thing itself, it's a party trick. However, on car carfection, mm -hmm. it's say, yeah, you can use it when you're you go open your farm door, mm -hmm. farm gate, and then you have your car drive over to you so you don't have to get your boots money. Yeah. I'm like, oh shit, yeah. I wonder how deep of mud it'll go through by itself. <laughs> yeah. So that's what I'm wondering, right? Another interesting thing here, I found the power assisted doors. Yeah. Um, uh, all four passenger doors are power assisted, also controlled via the Pivi Pro screen for elegant entry and exit in any situation, including yeah. at angles up to 10 degrees while off road. That's interesting. Yeah. So it works so, when yeah, you're no, I'm, off road. I'm, I'm excited about that. That's kind of cool. Um, um, another thing that I want <laughs> that they say is all new, it's not. Um, it has the PM 2.5 cabin air filtration system, which is. Yeah been around the defender has it and they make a big deal about oh it kills the covid virus yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, i zero zero uh, i paid a hundred dollars for my air, air filtration system and, and uh yeah no, i i did not get that on mine because i didn't get three you had to get three on the defender you had to get three zone climate control to unlock the um oh, air really? filtration yeah. yeah and i didn't bro climate, i don't care multiple zone climate control is money when you are not by yourself like it's it is. just like it's crazy um then again yeah 100 yeah, percent. like stuff like that like it's such a gimmick i don't um, me personally i didn't get that because i don't always have people in the back stand i mean defender is just dual zone which is fine and it has air vents in the back yes air vents i think i don't know if they have them in the b pillars still or not but it has them on the back of the console whereas yeah. my discovery doesn't my discovery has a three zone climate and they're the yeah. only two air vents for the second row passengers are in the B pillars and they're tiny. Oh, really? 
and you can't like there's no airflow and if you got the four zone climate you got air vents above you so like in the back of the discovery it, it, yeah in the, that one was we did not order that one it just came with the hey, three zone let's do this man because um it is halloween and like i said i do have yeah. kids yeah so i need to go trick or i mean i got to take the yeah. kids trick or treating to the mall but you know what we only got through i think about half of the press yeah mall. and i don't know alex could i be so bold and invite myself back to part two absolutely <laughs> absolutely um, do you have time real quick maybe just to go through the uh specs that we did yes let's okay let's do that and then we'll go through for next time we'll go through the the um i think i stopped at tech technology in the okay. path in this and but yeah because i'm like looking i'm like yeah there's there are a few things i want to there's just so much information about this i mean we could go on and on forever but yeah let's right. do that i don't yeah. want to hold you up let's real quick go through your i'll pull yours up first you and i kind of went very similar so i'm going to um share my screen so why don't you tell us about uh your how you would right. get a range rover I, it was great i did this because i want to do a full another build on the on my actual channel but okay so um one let's talk about that color damn oh damn I know. right look at that thing Holy british crap. racing green so i was tell the wife it's like i was gonna text a uh, a contact i have it's like oh how do i get one of these get another you know um anyways i picked that green because um i need bright colors i can't do white i can't do black um i can't i can do a couple cool shades of gray maybe i don't know but i just i wanted something red did not look right on it uh it was too big blue as cool as it did i don't think it fits it i think it's too bright so i love love this in the green i chose the whatever trim that yellow tr goldish trim thing on it um i think that's what they used at launch um oh the nickel atlas exterior package yes interesting I, that that's... Because I, I i had the black the black one and i was like no i need it needs to pop a little bit more so because i have that on my build which i'll show you in a second but british but, racing but green but it was green. it was it was yeah. um it was standard on the se the nickel atlas exterior package it was not 1100 canadian dollars it was zero american dollars so, um that might be canadian american thing could be um we'll have to play around let's go on the inside which so i call this the rolling forest nice i like okay, that. that's that's the name of my car the rolling forest because i got the green inside and even julia my daughter she's like it looks like a tree i'm like yeah, <laughs> damn right it looks like a tree and so i picked this brown beige whatever um, away is what it's right called. yeah i love it it's and then gorgeous. i believe i believe this was the was it the um the birch I think, I think this is the one. this has the uh walnut with inlay so walnut. it's got like the the yeah yeah, yeah. all right the sv one so yeah no that's um yeah no i i really i was like oh that looks so cool yeah it's it's amazing i mean the sv i don't know if you've ever seen the svo british racing green in person i have seen it on in l405 it. really it's nice. amazing so like my mom's discovery is 93 green it better look fucking amazing yeah like my mom's discovery is Aintree green which is the exact same paint coat as jaguars british ra british racing green yeah um and the metallic on that color um is insane but when you have that next because we had that next to at our dealer they had um an svo racing green l405 i parked yeah. next to it in the discovery i was shocked because i thought the discovery's race racing green was insane uh, SVO racing green is on a completely different planet. Well, it has to on, be on, I mean, in, in terms of metallic. So I'll show you mine. Very similar. I, uh, or wait, oh, why is Zoom is not responsive sometimes? Go away. Let's, uh, this is mine. But no, that, that is, that's yours. <laughs> I was like, wow, bro, good, good option. This is, this is mine. So I went with the SE, the base model with the okay. six cylinder, because I do not want that N63 engine. Um, it's the short wheelbase. I went for, it's hard for me. If I were to get one, I would need to see this color in person. This is Belgravia green, mm -hmm. which is cool. They named it after a neighborhood in London, England. 
because land how do you have red, red reflectors on the back of yours i think go to Oh, you use the European bills. No, this is US. Okay, go to mine. Go to the back. No, no picture of the back. There's no picture of the back. What? Oh, you got to be joking, right? Damn. How can you? I not did notice a couple glitches on the build thing when I was building it. Okay, Could crazy. Be. That is weird. Strange. But. This is Belgravia green, so it's similar to racing green. I would need to see it in person. If I did not like this in person, then I would get the SVO racing green. Mm -hmm. uh, I went with the 22 inch SV bespoke wheels, mm -hmm. diamond turn wheels. I got the, I did get the black roof. I think this mm -hmm. thing would look awesome with a silver roof, but they don't do the silver roof anymore. Oh, another thing weird. Why did they bring back the dual antennas? The Evoke had that for a while. It just looks strange. That looks stupid. Um, inside identical to yours. Caraway interior. I have the walnut, but it's not, it doesn't have the metal inlay because it's not an autobiography with the SV wood. Um, it's so just the standard. It's the only reason you didn't go with the autobiography because you don't like the engine? Yes. Really? Huh? And I'm being realistic here. If I were to buy one, so am I. I would not, I would not get, I would not get the autobiography, even Wait, in the L405. Are you yeah. married? No, I'm no. 20 years old. You can be married at 20, bro. <laughs> I know you can. Actually, I have, one of my no, friends okay. from high school got married right after high school, and I don't know how long that's going to last. Yeah. Um, no. Oh, yeah. No, no, that's cool. Because, like, I've always, like, you know, and once again, it's it's personal belief. It's like, I'm like, you're getting a Range Rover, get the real thing. Get the top of the line. I get that. I right? totally get that. But then it's like, you, you also have to understand your, like, um, you know that that one that just might be my belief but i was like like i i just i don't under like i could never be happy with a six cylinder ranger work i was just like there's no power there's no nothing it's too big of a car it's heavy it's sluggish i actually kind of disagree with you on that a little bit i think the we could race yeah you're gonna win no matter right. what but then again but you're used it's to a heavy a sluggish car with a small engine which puts more stresses on the engines that's why the smaller engines have bigger problems well, actually, I know the supercharged V6 Range Rovers are good. I mean, my mom's Discovery has the supercharged V6, weighs the same as a Range Rover, and that thing, of but course, the, it's not as fast as a V8, but for what no, no, it I is, know, but, like, if you look in the groups, is, like, fuck, the amount of fucking issues with yeah. like six-cylinder engines or the, the, the V6, um, it's just... And then again, this is a new <laughs> engine, but this is the straight six, 400 horsepower, which is not, you know... It's 40 horsepower more than the old supercharged V6. Uh, I think they say zero to 60 is like five and a half seconds, which is respectable. And like, again, for me, I, and this is just personal preference here again, like I hey, would not Astra, get, go ahead. Have you, have you, have you driven both V8s and the V6? I have. Yeah. yeah. And it, it, if it was an L405, I would get a supercharged trim level Range Rover. And get some options on it. Had be like one hundred twenty thousand um, dollars. I would not get the six cylinder L four hundred five, even though I thought it was enough power. It's just like I like the V eight more. But with this one, I thought. I mean, <laughs> I'm just such an ass. I, I know. know that. Like it it's just yeah yeah no hundred percent. I just and once again, it might just go back to my childhood. Like my dad mm -hmm. had the uh, the the two point eight liter V six Cherokee. Mm -hmm. A year later, they came out with the four liter V6, which was a completely better engine. Yeah. Way more power. And our Cherokee was just so underpowered. It was just, it was just, you know, and it wore it out. And yeah. So that's yeah. what I was like. All right. Just buy more power. The more power you have, you don't have to use it all. But it's right there, it's a nice, lazy V8. I love V8s, man. I so do I. And even my old car with the, I was, wor I was worried going from a V8 to a four cylinder. From the disco four to the defender yeah and all, in all honesty i mean yeah it's not as i prefer, of course i prefer the v8 but in terms of just around town you have you have a little bit of turbo lag whereas the v8 it's just instant power all the time but other than that i mean zero to 60 in my defender is only a half second slower than the lr4 with the v8 seven seconds in the defender versus six and a half for the lr4 which is not when you think of it that's not bad 
Um, but real quick options I got. So I got the, the Belgravia green caraway interior. Um, I got the heated and cooled seats. Uh, every, I got the black headliner, which yeah, you can't cool. see. Um, heated steering wheel. Yeah. Heads up display, the Meridian 3D surround sound system. So not the signature, but it's no. the 19 an speaker. With this? No, you can't no, get the wasn't. signature. No. Uh, I think that's only on the autobiography and above. Okay. Um, but the 3D surround sound system, it's still good. It's it's a little bit down on power. It's 800 watt, 19 speaker instead of um, 825 watt. But then again, this now has the 3D effects. So it has yeah, the speakers. Yeah, it could be like it's probably they probably they were able to produce more better sound with mm -hmm. less power now because of better tech and everything. Yeah. I'm sure that's why they they yeah. did that. Right. And 3D is really cool with the speakers. It gives you height. My dad's Audi has. Bose, I said it has Bose, but it's his is a 3D Bose, so it, you can adjust like the height. It's pretty cool. Oh, that's cool. Um, and then yeah, inside I just got I did get the tailgate event suite that uh, has the chairs on the tailgate. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and I think if you're doing that, you got to do it. Like, oh yeah, what's the point of, of yeah. buying one without? Like, there was a guy TGE TV or something like that. I don't know. He didn't check the option for heads up display. He's like, I never look at. It. I'm like, have you have a car with it? Yeah. Like once you look at heads up display, you never want to have a car without it. And I'm kind of in the same boat because my dad's Audi has a heads up display and I did not get it on my Defender. I'm not like regretting it, but if I could go back and do it again, I would choose it. But the only thing I said that I truly regret not getting is the clear sight mirror, rear view mirror yeah. for the camera. But heads up display, I, and it was kind of, it was, it was expensive on the Defender and I was kind of limited to what I could get. Um, I mean, my, I did have a budget. Yeah. And I could, I could totally fit that in, but I was just like, I'd rather, it, it wasn't super important to me to where I felt like I absolutely had to have it. But if I could do it again, I, I probably would. Um, I got four zone climate. Uh, I got the front center console refrigerator. I have yeah. that in the Defender. Love it. Um, it's super yeah. handy. I really That's, enjoyed that. Oh, I did get the park assist. Yeah. The automatic parking, just because it was $200. Why yeah. not? Like there's some things that you're like, so cheap it'd be cool to have and configurable right? configurable terrain response i got as well yeah because you got to get 550 and accessories i did i got the crossbars and the okay so i didn't have options for this stuff okay three accessory maybe not maybe canada hasn't done that yet but i got the crossbars and i got the I union jack for... valve stem caps okay yeah because i was looking for the accessories because i was like i want um um i'd want that because like yeah. when i get my full size like i'm gonna have a i don't want to say built out it will not be built out it'll have offer tires on it and i would like to have a roof rack um that i can put stuff on now albeit the roof rack that i have for this for the sport it's fine like i have it's a rhino rack i did this mm -hmm. video and like so they're like removable cross bars yeah. And you can put whatever on top of them. And like, yeah, that might be great. Cause then it, you keep the sick, clean look. But when you need the utilitarian whatever of having stuff on the roof, right? That's the right language. So you have that. Did you just say you're getting one of these? I, yeah, I would like to. I would like to. Now, um, you know, like, I'm going to make some phone calls uh -huh. and say, hey, okay. Cause you know how the market right now is just, oh, charted. yeah. It is. So I'm going to make some phone calls and say, hey, if I want out, what do I do? Or what are my options? How much would it cost me? Because if I could drive one of these until the new Sport SVR comes out, I'd do it in a heartbeat. Really? Because it'd be phenomenal for the channel. Abs yeah. That's the only reason I'm doing it. Otherwise, I'd do, do it for the YouTube views. I would do it for the views. Um, Because, bro. Yeah. Right. Just, so like i'm gonna look into it it's probably not gonna happen because um just because of the market because it'll yeah. probably it'll probably end up being like oh yeah you get a little bit like getting out of the lease will be a lot less than it would have been at a regular time but then uh, they're probably not gonna be making a ton of these because they can't right now yeah and that's probably the biggest problem and so right. you know it's like it'll be interesting it will be it's interesting it'll, how it's it, gonna it play will out. Be to see what happens so. You know, I think real quick before I let you go, because yeah. I was my uncle who also, you know, works for us as well. He um, 
he has a Mercedes E-Class. He's always, okay. for the, like the past 15 years, he, he bought his first one, like he's a CPO. And then he got, he leased a new one. And he, he's, ever yeah. since he's been leasing a new E-Class every three years. Yesterday, he went to go and try to find a new one because his lease is up in like five, six months. And, you know, because of the car shortage, he's, you know. So there's three Mercedes dealers in Cincinnati. Yeah. He went to the, um, one of the bigger ones and, you know, they came back or like, well, we don't have any cars now, but if you, you, we can order you one and it will be here in time when your lease is up. And then they, they, you know, came back with the numbers and it was really, it was way more than he was ever expecting. And that's because, really? oh yeah, we're, we're adding like 15, we're adding like a $15,000 to every car that we're selling now because we don't have any cars to the sticker price. Yeah. I've seen a lot like, of, yeah, I've seen a lot of noise on TFL site about like, um, Ford was Ford added thirty nine grand to an F two fifty for market adjustment thirty nine thousand dollars. And that's what I like about my Land Rover dealer is because when I got my Defender, all the Land Rover dealers were marking them up. My dealer did not. Actually, my dealer gave me some money off, um, mm -hmm. barely any money off, but money off nonetheless. Yeah. Uh, but with like in my uncle, he he goes to he he goes to all three Mercedes dealers and he he goes with wh whichever one gives him the best price. Yeah. And he doesn't care about going somewhere else or whatever. Bro, right? and that's and that's unfortunate that all three of those dealers are idiots because yeah. they should learn how to capture somebody's yeah. attention. And like, or just like, bro, hook people up and they'll keep coming back. Yeah. Like it's sales is not hard. No. If you treat your customers right, they'll keep coming back. Yesterday we went out for dinner in this little Italian restaurant. And um, you know, it was a great little place, we waited outside for like 40 minutes in the cold they were full mm -hmm. um and then you know first time going there met um one of the owners pat and uh yeah we were just talking and uh, he was able to you know hooks up exactly what we wanted and uh, i was just talking to him because i'm talking to the guy yeah and uh you know i see see tables beside us getting some cheesecake right and i'm like i'm, I'm like the cheesecake looks insane he's like yeah you want me to bring you one of those i'm like nah man we got we got to get going the kid's getting restless yeah. you've seen them we got to get out of here it's like it's all good. he's like no, no no i bring you one it's like no, no bro he's like no i bring you one on the house you take home bro that cheesecake was the best fucking cheesecake i've ever had in my life like it was insane yeah. like i'm like i might order takeout just che cheesecake takeout now for yeah like, that's awesome but like it was just amazing customer service he got a 25 percent tip i don't think i've ever tipped that high in my life yeah um like it was just man we are definitely gonna go like now we're not gonna go to the other italian place yeah we used to go to all the time. it's we're customer have... service means everything and that's how it is like with my land rover dealer there's only one jaguar land rover dealer in cincinnati the next closest one is in dayton ohio which is the next town up it's like 45 50 minutes north of us okay um but cincinnati you know we bought three cars from him all through the same guy he's yeah. been there forever he's been he's great to us and he's, and, he, and, he, and the other thing is like i'm friends with a lot of people there other salespeople, and all the salespeople are great there um dealers great uh service department is off the record it's not going to go in the final recording not the best well, um, well why why like so just, I, I like you've seen my videos about the yeah. service report bro if you don't do stuff on record how do you expect them to get any better well the thing right. was like one of the things like my speaker was vibrating it was like there was like you know like a little rattle in my door and i it's been back three times and they have they keep bro, saying they can't okay. find it so tell them not to check the speaker tell them to check oh shit what's it called i had the same problem on the rover and yeah they're different cars but it might be the same issue it's actually like a some part of the door panel that's that separated and it was a manufacturer de defect it, okay i'm gonna write that down they had to take it to their body shop to have it fixed interesting it was the craziest thing and so they checked the speaker they're like no it's not blowing it shouldn't be rattling like this what's going on and it was something inside the door that had separated you know what because I know the speaker's not blown. It sounds fine. When I put pressure against the door panel, it goes away. I told you. There you go. And the other thing oh, is... So it's, look, it's not the service department. It's just not all techs are the best. Okay. And so some techs might be lazier than others. Or some techs are not as experienced. Or they might not know to look for certain things. But look, 
if you tell them, and now here's a pro tip, don't go back there and talk to your service advisor, talk to the service manager. Mm-hmm. Say, here's the thing, right? I've had this three times. You guys keep checking this. I want you to check this specific thing though with the door because I was talking to somebody, he ran into the same issue. They did the same thing you guys did. And then they looked and they saw that something had actually separated in the door that shouldn't have separated and I bet you they'll find it because that's what they did for mine. They found it and it went away because it was driving me nuts. Oh, it drives me nuts too. Oh my God. It was I mean, so bad. Like it was like, I was, I was turning down the bass and shit in my system yeah. because I was like, I can't handle this. But yeah. that's what it was, man. And I, real quick, another thing, my LR4 had the same issue, but what it was, it was the wood trim that oh, just, really? it would rattle a little bit. And what I did is since, you know, we're in refrigeration, we have this yeah. stuff, it's called sealing gum. It's like, yeah, yeah, silly yeah. putty for yeah, yeah, I know what for play doh for yeah, and I just took a tiny bit of that. I yeah. got like a little. Uh, mm-hmm. I actually used it was bad. I used a yeah. flathead screwdriver to just get it open a little bit. Stuck yeah. some in there, went away. Yeah, there you go. But, but you got a brand new defender. Fix that. Yeah, oh, yeah, it's going and, back. And in a couple remember, weeks, so. your defender's a year old, less than twenty thousand miles. Mm-hmm. Rattles they have to fix under yeah. warrant. Like they have to get the shit done. Yeah. Right. She's like, no, it's still rattling. Fix it. Find somebody else to fix it. Do a better job. Like, bro, I am hard on them. Like, like I, you know, bro. And that's why it's like, no, you should leave this in because honestly, if they, if they're watching and they're like, oh, they're not going to be like, oh, we hit that Alex guy. We're not going to do it. Like, no, they're going to fucking be forced to step up their name because what's going to happen. They're going to start losing business Yeah. because other people are going to be like, I'm not going to go to Cincinnati Land Rover. We're not saying don't do that. Like go yeah. there right now. Well, right? I mean, a lot of people, they don't have a choice. It's the only dealer here. No, but, no, they do have a choice. Their choice is just to go to one dealer or to drive further away mm-hmm. to go to a better one. They, so people have a choice. It's just what choice is yeah. less painful. Right. And I'm, and like what I said, their service part is not the best, but the people there, I mean, all the service, I know the service advisors there, they're all great. You know, they all know me. The service bro, advisors then, have always been good. But bro, flex the muscle and yeah. tell them to step up yeah. their game and fix your defender. Yeah. Just say, guys, come on. Yeah. I need this fixed. Right? Yeah. And, 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 and like I said, it's going back in a few weeks because I'm getting a new seat cushion and new charging ports. And that was, that's was that been on order for a while, and they all yeah. finally came in. And I told them, well, I'm, I'm just going to come in because the charging ports have been in. Uh, they've been sitting there waiting for me for a long time. But I was oh, like, really? I'm just going to come in once everything gets in here so i don't have to keep going back in back in, yeah you know and and they're like yeah that's fine but so i'm gonna i'll bring it up again to them but again that's not their fault because they 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 just couldn't get it um no but, no yeah you, but yeah, like, an issue. i will say it but since hey the parts department is amazing the parts department's great so and one thing i've learned yeah. is larger dealers have more parts on hand like I, I used to go to langley and vancouver just is able to get me parts faster without waiting because they have a larger department. Right. Yeah. Right. Um, so it's just, yeah, man, I've just, I've dealt with a lot of service departments and uh, I'm not an expert, but like I'm, I'm anal when it comes to my shit and um, I am. And I'm just, no, I'm like, not, I'm laughing because it actually, I don't I, take I, ball. I know, so but you like, said, you just said, I'm anal when it comes to my shit. <laughs> that's fucking funny. Right. Yeah. But it's just, you know, and it's funny, it's because, uh, you know, there's a uh, shop, Hesp Automotive here in Port Moody. Um, shout out to Alistair. Um, he, he's like, you're a little anal when it comes to your right. I'm like, a little? And he's like, don't take it the wrong way. I'm like, that, that, bro, that's, thank you. Yeah. That was like the best compliment you could say. Um, so I don't let, I don't let um, the dealers mess me around. It, it's just like it's just no i want it fixed i want this done the right way and i got into a whole thing with vancouver with the service advisors there when they found out about the tune and then they were dragging their feet on shit and um i was like i was like Fogo was like no i want you you're gonna hang up with me you're gonna go talk to your foreman you're gonna get this specific answer from him and you're gonna call me back end of discussion yeah. bro I, and then all of a sudden they started working on my car faster so just don't be a bitch. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, you're right. I'm, I'm, I've always been known as being Mr. Nice Guy. Um, but 
don't. Sometimes you have to walk let up a bit. And it's, you know, and I'm like, I'm as, I try to be as nice as possible, yeah. but like, let people walk on you, they will. And if you care about your stuff, you, you like, bro, you're an easy customer to deal with them. If, if, if you're just going to like turn a blind eye and we can just drag our feet and do yeah. the minimum, right? Like, come on, man. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't want to hold you up any longer. Oh, um, good, bad. Um, this is fun. So I'll tell you what, uh, I'm going to cut this out real quick, but I'm going to do like the outro. Oh yeah. And yeah. I'm going to stitch it together. And then after, after I hit stop record, I just want to talk to you for yeah, yeah. a couple of things, yeah, we, just to we can schedule that. another thing. Once but, you hit once. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Once you hit stop record, let me go take a piss really quick and yeah. then we can finish. Yeah. So all right. Your- all right. So we're going to cut this off here right now, but you want to come back on to discuss this even further. Cause like I said, it's a lot of info. It, mm. <laughs> it's a lot to take in. So there is going to be a part two to this episode. Um, it will be up sometime. And uh, yeah, so Emeka, thank you so much for coming on. Uh, yes, was- why don't you just drop, you know, tell us where to find you. I mean, you're obviously, take yeah. one look at you. There there you are, Driven yeah, Hard. I can understand where to find me. Yeah. Um, Driven Hard YouTube, Instagram, Driven Hard Official. Um, and yeah, honestly, those are the two places that you'll find me. Or on the road or on the trail. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, right, Red Range Over Sport. <laughs> Right. Or maybe a green full size new. Who knows? Right, right. So uh, we will see you back on the show very shortly to finish discussing this. And uh, I'm sure we'll see you back on again after that down the road as well. All right. Sounds good, man. All right. Thank you so much. Take care. Board. All right. I'm I'm gonna do the introduction. Yeah. Your, yeah. your last name is Pran- Osai. That's how you pronounce Osai. it. Right? Yes. All right. Perfect. And um, okay, cool. Phone off. That's good. Um, I need to turn and, and So, off. what are we going to be talking about this time around? Um, yeah, I don't. I mean, what? There's. I still. I still have this been in my desk since then. I'm just like, how the hell can you? I, do yeah, I know, but bro, I haven't even got to building mine. Like, it's just been so. Or I built mine for you, but then like yeah. I want to do like video building it. Haven't done like it's just yeah things have been crazy. Well, it came out right before Christmas, right before the holidays. I yeah, mean, it was holidays, like, right? Are you so, still gonna like get one of these until the new SVR comes out? So, um, like yeah, I actually did the. I called the dealership to find out what's the price, like what what is offering for to get under my lease early, and like what you know with based on what's going on with the market mm-hmm. and. Um, we did that right before I left. And so I didn't really have a chance to like send those numbers to, to my accountant who's just better suited to like say, yeah, yeah that makes sense. Or no, that's stupid. Yeah. Um, that's what accountants are there for. Right. Exactly. And it's like, okay, cool. So uh, probably not just because um, I don't know, just because probably not right now. Like, yeah. Like I just don't think um like, cause like I bought or at least the Range Rover back when like my, cr- like I literally just got out of debt and it was like horrible credit and I got yeah. the Range Rover. And so like, I got it at the worst possible rates you could like not horrible, but horrible. Yeah. Like I ain't never going to do that again. Right. Yeah. Like I did. I was like, well, who cares? Oh man, I got a bit of cash, yeah. but like, I ain't never going to do that again. So I'll probably just like ride out this lease with it um because it's may 2023 is when it's over so about another year or so Mm -hmm. um however i will never lease a car for four years ever again because it's just too long like it's old now like it just it's it's great i love it but it's an old car now like it just does like it still feels nice but it's old do you know what i mean yeah yeah, I mean, right. it, it, I mean, you got that car basically kind of at the end of its life cycle. And JLR life cycles are pretty long. No, no, not not that ma- not not that old. I mean, like just driving, old. like it's ninety thousand kilometers. Here. Yeah, which is like 50, 50, 50 60, something. Yes. Yeah, like between miles, fifty-five and which 60, is 000. right, which is old when you're looking at leasing only brand new cars yeah. because like it makes noises. It's like I'm like. I ain't never gonna fucking figure that shit out. Like it's just like now I'm just letting shit slide. Where before I was like, nope, I want that fix. I want this fix. Yeah. Right. But you know, because I'm like, oh, whatever, fuck it. Who cares? And I'm like, I don't like that anymore. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but 
it's still fun. Don't get me wrong. It's I smile every time I drive it. That's that's um, how I feel about my Defender, which speaking of which I did yell at my dealer. Yeah. So what happened with that? Because so, I gave you a couple pointers and then <clears throat> bottom line is, did they fix it? The stereo rattle, no. the door rattle? No. Have they found it? No. I'm still convinced they never even thought about looking for it. Wait, so this is what happened. In for, yeah, go ahead. So I brought it in. It was for a bunch of stuff. You know, I brought it in. For, it was an oil change and a bunch of other stuff. It, basically, it sat for two days. They didn't do anything, and I needed it back. And Do, do they, you have a loaner? That time, I did not. Because technically, I'm not old enough. How old are you? You have to be 21. I'm 20 and a half. Okay. But, but here's the hard. thing. This yeah. Here's the thing. We get loners. I still drive them. I just don't yeah. pick it up. I'm not going to yeah. crash it. But What? You know, um, but okay. So, so it, it went in for two days. And I, I it, it, it was a Friday. And I was like, listen, I need this car back. Um, they got me in the next week. And they did give me a loaner and they, they comped my oil change. So I didn't have to pay for that. Yeah. Nice. Everything that all the parts that were ordered that they needed to order that showed up, they put on, they did that. They fixed my auto high beam assist. They fixed my sunroof that was stuck closed. Mm-hmm. They did not fix the rev limiter in low range. Cause for some reason it, in low range, it will not rev past 3000 RPM, even in manual mode. Yeah, um, okay, that's right. because there's that. a limiter when it's in neutral and it prevents JLR from revving over 4,000. Yeah, but, but I'm talking, this is in low range, low range. only. In, Even, in, okay, really, that's strange, okay. Yeah, yeah, granted, in low range, you're not supposed to be taking it up to red line, right. but 3,000 RPM, you're yeah. still supposed to go over Well, that. no, what's the red line on that, 45? It just might be too high. The red line on the Defender is it's like 6,800. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah. Who knows? It might. It, it might never used be to that. be there. It never used to be oh, there. Oh, wait. You used to be able to go past that. In yeah. Oh, okay. So so like in one of those there. software updates Computer put that on there, and then they couldn't fix it. And I said, well, one of my friends in another state, his Defender had the same problem, and they fixed it, and it was just a PCM update. And so it's going yeah. back for that. Or well, they didn't fix that, and they did not fix my speaker. How, can you go like, to a different dealer? The next closest dealer is like fifty miles away. Oh shit! So it's just a little bit of a drive. Yeah, and okay. the thing is, I I love my dealer. They've always the service department used to be top notch. In the past two years, it's literally gone down the toilet. New manager. So this is what happened. Basically, like the service advisor that I had sucked. Yeah. Um, the main one that I had, there was another one that we used to have. And then for some reason they gave us this other guy who sucked and he left. I don't know if he left or got fired or whatever, but mm-hmm. the next time I went in, I was like, Oh, Tony has always helped me. I was like, Oh, Tony doesn't work here anymore. Yeah. Like, okay. Uh, and all the other service advisors were gone. One of them was replaced by a kid. that's probably my age and mm-hmm. didn't really seem to know what he was doing. Which, yeah. Okay. I understand you're new to the job. The other there's another woman. She came from like Lexus, which I'm like, why are you a service advisor at Lexus? Nothing ever breaks. Mm-hmm. Um, and then there was, they got another one. And the only service advisor that was left got promoted to manager. And he was the one that we used to work with. All right. And I didn't know that. Um, so and I tried calling the service department several times and no one would answer. So the, I called my salesman. He always helps me out because we've been working with him for what 11 years and so he he said oh you're gonna have to contact jamie he's the service manager he's like wait jamie fox is now the service manager mm-hmm. and he was like yeah i was like okay so i called up or i actually i sent him an email and i was like look i still love the car every time i hit that start button and see a little mm-hmm. defender on the screen it's like you know, I got this big smile on my face. Um, you know, you guys have always taken care of my family and I, and I just want this car fixed. And he's like, you got it. I have you scheduled for two weeks from today mm-hmm. and we'll take care of this. And so, and he knows, and he, he knows me. 
So mm-hmm. I think now it's, I don't, I think it's, everything should be fixed. Yeah, that's good. And for speaking was the last time I went, they did give me a loan or they gave me a discovery sport mm-hmm. base model, but it had like every option on it for a base model. It was actually quite mm-hmm. nice. It had the heads up display, which I should have got on my defender. Um, yep. And the other thing it had that I was originally going to get on the original defender build, but when I got the lower end one, I mm-hmm. forgot that it was no longer standard and mm-hmm. it was an option. It was the clear sight mirror that turns into that, the camera. That yes. is pretty much necessary on the defender. And also on that disco sport because the rear window is like the jail cell. Yeah. But <clears throat> But no, I think they're going to, um, they they should be, uh, taken care of yeah. now. That's good, man. That's good. It's, In that uh, service yeah, advisor. It sounds like knows. it's just, yeah, it sounds I like that dealership. The half ass job is, is not fly in my book and he yeah. knows that. So I think, I think they're going to do everything they can to, um, to help me out. Maybe they'll give me a really good loaner. I doubt it, but. You don't care about a good loaner. You just want your car fixed. Exactly. Right. So, no, that's good, man. That's all right. Uh, that's good. So, right. I'm going to do the introduction again, yep. and then we'll uh, we'll get into this. Um, Sounds hello, good. Hello, and welcome to the Autos and Airways podcast. We are here with Emeka Osai, driven hard on YouTube, drives his Range Rover hard everywhere. Currently enjoying the sunshine in sea in Mexico right now. So, yeah. all the way from Mexico, Mecca. Thank you so much for coming back on. Yeah, man. No, this is uh, this is great. Last time we were talking, I was up in Canada, drove all the way down. Yes, I drove the Range Rover all the way down to Mexico and uh, enjoyed some time on the beach. And now we're in Monterey. And um, yeah, man. So yeah. let's do it. Yeah. So last time we so I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do this. I'm, I'm probably going to stitch some parts of the old one yeah, together yeah. to make this because we went really long on the old t- just talking about the new Range Rover. Yeah, we um, ended what at the technology part, which is what you page? can like literally you can just bring stuff up and we can talk about it. Like, yeah, why not? If you want to bring up like different things, we could just talk about it and go back and forth like that. Yeah, um, let's just kind of go from the beginning and we'll kind of briefly discuss everything. Yeah. So, I guess we'll start off with I know the thing that you really were kind of concerned about, and I still have not gotten a complete answer on this was the new four-wheel drive system or yes. all wheel and, and i hate all-wheel drive yeah but that's my old thinking and you know what after actually talking to some mechanics not some mechanics talking to uh, al at heps automotive who specializes with Land Rover products we we were talking about it and he explained to it he's like bro you're thinking like like it was back in the 1990s with all-wheel drive like when it took yeah. like 10 seconds for the fuck for the for the front wheels and the back wheels to connect yeah right oh no it doesn't it happen takes, it, it doesn't he's like this is instantaneous your you'll still be driving on the freeway and you're you, it, it'll be switching and you won't even you won't be able to tell and you know i kept throwing the arguments back to him he's like the just technology is so good now that um you know and we don't know a ton about it yet but it's sh- i'm sure it'll work just like the um, automatic differentials that work on the defender and ranger on the current lineup. Whereas when you're off the gas, the diffs are open. Mm-hmm. But as soon as you hit a bit of throttle, the diffs close. Yeah. And I could see that exactly happening. Or what could also be a thing is when it's in comfort mode, and this is what I probably would imagine. When it's in comfort mode, it does do the rear wheel drive thing. But when you put it down to auto, I bet if anything, because yeah. auto is designed for off-road ready, it'll put it into permanent four-wheel drive yeah. um, at all times. So how do you get around? Hey, I want to drive around 80 kilometers an hour, 45 miles an hour in the rain on the highway going through puddles. Well, you put it in auto and you don't do that in comfort right. because now you have the security of the four-wheel drive system versus rear wheel drive and switch into all-wheel drive within a right. nanosecond. Yeah, but- Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm trying to find out where I can. It doesn't explain what I just said. Like, right. That's just me thinking that's probably how it works. There are like, I couldn't find any details on, okay, how does the system work through the different modes? Just the, just the usual Landover 
gibberish that they spew right. out. And I think that's probably going to, I think, I think putting it in auto will probably, I mean, it's in, it's lock it's, it into four wheel yeah. drive. Like that just makes more sense because that's what it's right. Yeah. So we'll see, but I'm thinking that's probably how it'll work. We don't know, but it, yeah, I mean, in, in, like I said, that thing just with those all wheel drives, it, it, it mm-hmm. and I also would assume, cause like we talked about Mazda is mm-hmm. kind of, it's, it's uh, proactive. Like the lights are on or, or, or temperature sensors I think yep. it's, it's cold. And I know it does that in the Range Rover. It's cold. Like if it's under a certain temperature, yeah. it will always be in a, in four wheel drive. Yes. Um, but it was like Mazda, if the wipers are on, like it's, it goes into all wheel drive. I would assume that Land Rover yeah. would be doing the same thing. Yeah. No. Um, yeah. It's all wheel drive. All wheel drive is always connected when driving off road. <laughs> so I assume, yeah, leaving it in auto, it knows it's off. Right. It like to, it would, it's, it oh, you're in auto, you're together. off road. So that's right. what I would assume, right? That that's, that's the way to get around that one concern I had about this, the new system. Um, so yeah i mean it's i i don't i really don't think anyone has anything to worry about um but yeah but you know but like it's interesting because like it is really cool how it they just the as you were saying before the diffs lock when you're Mm -hmm. and they don't fully lock i mean sometimes they do sometimes you can can see whatever you know if you're if you put in rock crawl and it's always locked um but yeah and i see yours has the rear diff oh yeah well. oh yeah i got no and you can having the most fully optioned four-wheel drive system was like the number one thing when i got it it's like no every world yeah so yeah i have the diff lock on the rear yeah. i don't well understand this 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 half halfway four wheel drive. The, don't all the v8s come standard with the rear locker no i don't know i have no clue really no no idea man um no like when you did, did you opt did you spec yours out bro i had like choice of five options because i got oh. the autobiography <laughs> yeah. so like i had like five extra options yeah. to go with because it had everything yeah. um so and then the H, the hst wasn't an option back yeah. then yeah. which is kind of like a lower end luxury one i think and you get and you get more power and you get more power, right? But you still so, have to pay extra for the low ratio of tr- the, the twin speed transfer case because that's not standard. But that right. is standard on all the V8s. That's okay. why I was asking if the rear diff okay. lock was standard on the V8s. I don't well. know. Um, one, it was just so not so long ago, a couple years ago. Yeah. But two, they've just they've changed a lot. Like yeah. I got it and I had paid a hundred dollars for Apple CarPlay. Yeah. But it's free now. It was free yeah. a few months later. But um, yeah, so it's just like they change how they do it, even though the model hasn't changed. They just yeah. change what they're selling um, based and that's on. That's kind whatever. of funny because my mom's Discovery, mm-hmm. we got that's 2017. That thing is, you know, four, we got that almost four and a half years ago. Mm-hmm. And that thing did not even have Apple CarPlay when it came out, but they did a but, software update yeah. for free that enabled it. And mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't use it, I don't like it. My mom has no idea what it is, and she wants nothing to do with it. But, no. um, but yeah. So I guess, but with that, yeah, that's definitely cool. We still have obviously um, center and rear locking differentials on the new one. Standard mm. rear locking diff, which before oh, cool. it wasn't. Again, it, I, I I can't remember if the V8s all had the standard rear locking diff, but on a, most models it was an option. But it's cool that the E diff is now standard on the new Range Rover. Mm-hmm. Also, rear wheel steering, that's really yeah, cool. No, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Rear wheel steering, you know, really, you, you, you don't really think it's going to do much, but it does. Just steering those rear wheels just a little bit, really, um, please tell me you cannot hear that, right? No. The AC can't. just turned on and it's really loud. No, I can't hear it at all, man. So all right, good. 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 This new mic that my aunt and uncle got me for Christmas is working. So, so Great. that's the that's like the one thing I got for Christmas. I asked because I was like, for me, Christmas is like, there's nothing I want other than a Swiss Army knife, and I want the illuminated tread plates on my Defender. Mm-hmm. Well, the illuminated tread plates, I went to buy them. Mm-hmm. They don't have them in my color. 
in the US oh, yet. Wow. I can get black ones. Yeah. But that's not going to match my interior. And the other thing I wanted was a Swiss Army knife. My mom said that she got it for me. She lost it. <laughs> mm. She lost mm. it. And it still, still, still can't find it. Oh, really? So that's how my Christmas went. <laughs> but, you know, it's fine. I don't, it, she can't find it. I'll just buy one. I mean, they're, they're not expensive. It doesn't matter. Yeah. And they're but, like 30 bucks. I yeah. If, yeah. I, for, yeah. I think, I think the one, yeah. The one I texted her that I wanted was like 30 bucks. And she said she didn't even get me that one. So I was like, mm-hmm. okay. So you either got me one that was, has way more tools than I'll ever need, or you got me like the twelve dollar one that's literally a knife and a toothpick. Mm-hmm. But whatever, we will. <laughs> uh, all good. All good. Um, but yeah, I think just some more stuff. Um, they're talking. Uh, Omnicron is now a thing, apparently. But the Cabin Air Purification Pro filter. Yeah, I'd, 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 I'd like to see the the uh, the actual size behind that. I'm pretty sure yeah. 80% of that's marketing. Like, obviously, there is some stuff I'm sure it does, but, yeah. like, how it actually affects you is probably complete BS. Like, in yeah. terms of, like, how, like, the, the air, how much cleaner is your air inside your car? Like, it's I, not. Like, and how much is it, how much cleaner is it to actually make any difference? Like, to you, to your, right. like, that's just... And the other thing they're talking about is how it's all new, and they've been doing this for several years now. It's well, yeah, not all I, new. I was disappointed with their their um, yeah. Well, yeah, we talked about that in the first episode. Like, yeah, their- and, and like so this stuff is just like cabin air. Mercedes, the new EQS, has this exact same thing in it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I've just never like I option it because it's an option. Yeah, but. Like I don't care about. Yeah, it. you could get that on the Defender. I didn't get it because you had to get the three zone climate control, um, which I didn't get because I hardly ever have people in the back seat. Yeah, and it was like it was it was like pretty expensive too. I was like, I really don't need this. I, I got the know. higher end one. I was like, yeah, it would have came with it, but mm-hmm. I was just like, I don't, I don't. Yeah, it's not really all that necessary when you know. Well, if you're by yourself, the time it's just or- me in the car. Well, yeah, like then it doesn't make sense. But I tell you, like when we drove down from Canada, having four zone, oh, it was, was fantastic. Yeah, it was fantastic because everyone's like, you know, it's just like it's great. I didn't think I was going to enjoy that feature as much. Yeah, um, but no, it makes a massive, massive difference. It does um, yeah? For my for dad's Audi families. has four zone, and mm-hmm. it, and it's and it's lovely. My dad's Audi has that. My mom's Discovery has the three zone in the discovery they screwed you over because like the three zone was standard on like hse and hse luxury Mm -hmm. and ours is the luxury and you could get it in the three zone there are only two air vents for the second row passengers and they're in the b pillars and they are fucking like this tall Mm -hmm. and like this narrow and that's the only airflow you get Mm. so it's well in the discovery or discovery sport discovery full size the one that my mom has. But that's, so that's like the base AC, AC system? It is technically the mid-grade AC system. Okay, but yeah. like But so it's I on the top of the line model. Well, yeah, because that's how they, they make money with options, right? Right. So in, like, in like at the time, that. the only way you could get four zone is if you got like the luxury climate package. Well, yeah, of course, because it's the luxury climate yeah. package. Yeah, it, it, it was, right? it was like... like I think it was like four grand or something. And the one that we got came from another dealer and it, it didn't have it. Mm-hmm. If my mom were to order one, that was, she, she did want that package, but that was the only thing that that caught that in the refrigerator were the two things my mom wanted on the discovery, but that one didn't have. And it was the only, it was basically the only green HSE luxury in the country. Mm-hmm. So, but but yeah, like, but that three, it's it's useless and you had to get the four zone, but at least they kind of fix that with the, with the facelift. They put, they still have those little air vents in the B post, but they put big ones behind the console. That's good. That's good. Um, but yeah, I think what, what else do you want to talk about? Cause there's some, I know last time we talked about, there was some other stuff 
about the new Rami. Like I said, there's so much to talk about. Yeah, I like because I'm not looking at the papers. I cannot remember what was on that sheet. Um, shit, there's. I haven't seen anything that. Like, and I guess because they haven't done like the launch event just with everything that's been going on. It, it was a long time ago. It was in October. It, it was. But then also it's like usually after car launches starts getting out there, but probably because of just the state of everything, mm-hmm. they haven't been able to push it out as much um, to get it. Like I know LA had the LA auto show. Yeah. I didn't see, I, I didn't see one interesting clip from that. Maybe Doug's. Doug's was cool. Yeah. yeah Doug got uh, that. But yeah. like there is not one like I because think because everyone already see. saw it at the reveal. Well, yeah, this is like until you drive it. Like there's Doug mentioned a couple other cool things about it. I was like, oh yeah, like he increased my likability on it yeah. a little bit more. But it's still like I don't, I definitely don't feel like I'm missing out on anything yet. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. Um, until you see one in person, and then you probably realize. Yeah, well, yeah, 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 because that'll change. But then, like, it's like feature wise and everything like that. I'm like, all right, so yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's a slightly newer system, but it's not drastically. It's not like a drastic overhaul. Um, Even though they would say but, it is, which I mean, technically it is. It just doesn't feel like it or look like it. You know what well, I mean? Well, it's because info. What's the call? Pivy Pro has been out on the Defender. Oh, yeah. And it's on the Velar. Like, so it's like, well, we've seen it already. Yeah. So, okay. So I thought you high. were talking about the whole car itself, not the. Not well, the yeah, car. the car itself. Like, and that's where the difference, that's where I think it'll be more exciting when people start driving it. I hope. Right. It because drives. then we get to actually see how it all comes together yeah. and works. You know, I, I, I have faith in them that they're not going to change the driving experience too too much because all range rovers are very kind of similar in how they drive Mm -hmm. Um, but i feel like the rear wheel steering is going to make this car much more fun to drive probably better off-road it's going to handle better i mean poor Mm -hmm. i'm I'm a huge advocate i'm a four-wheel steer on anything but especially porsches i mean if you drive a porsche 911 without rear wheel steering and one with rear steering yeah there's actually a big difference yeah no that uh no the the four-wheel steering is going to make a massive yeah. difference and especially, especially for such a big vehicle off-road yeah it'll be neat to see it um off-road i wonder um i'd like to know what's the smallest wheels you can get hopefully you can still get 20s on it 21s are the smallest no but that's from the factory like oh can you yeah fit, yeah can you fit 20s without having to um f- change the brakes Right, I would assume it probably Hopefully, as long as long as they haven't increased the brake size. If it's using the same ones as the, it, assuming it's using the same brakes as the Defender, um, I should doubt be because isn't it a lot heavier? Well, it's not a lot heavier, but um, not, like, do you have the Brembo brakes? I do not have the Brembos on mine. Okay, they're the, the Brembo. Is that what they're yeah. called? Bre- <laughs> yeah, Brembo. Um, I'm, I, I'm assuming it's using the Brembo brakes, not basic right. Um, right. brakes. So who knows? Hopefully they're the same size um, because putting 20s on it is like if that's if I was to get it, I'd want that so I could put some all-terrain tires on it. Right. Because um, I know uh, with Defender, the six cylinder ones that do come with the Brembos, or they they're not Brembos, but they're 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 brembos you know it doesn't say you, brembo what do you mean? It, but like so like the six cylinder defenders have the bigger brakes which yeah brembo doesn't brakes, Land Rover only use brembo brakes for those pretty much yeah even though but it okay. doesn't say yeah, i don't care what they say yeah yeah it doesn't say, say but if you get the um, va then it does say you know brembo and all that stuff but it, they're um and with the brembos on the six cylinder you the smallest wheel you can fit without modification or 19s assuming they right. use the same brakes on maybe the six cylinder range rover you mm-hmm. should be able to get 19s now if they do it on the the, the v8 ones the defender v8 the smallest wheel you can have are 20s so i yeah. assume you could probably get 20s on yeah the full size unless they got a whole new brake system coming up unless they but, which i i doubt it but you, you, i mean you never know you, you'll have to no. wait until the car they sure as hell didn't you... explain anything properly on during their presentation no god like 
like I watched like I st- I was what the reveal happened when I was at work and I had it yeah. like playing in the background and I was like watching it but not fully paying attention then I got home and I rewatched it in like detail and I'll never forget the thing that just stood out to me the whole time was freaking you know Jerry McGovern Jerry with a G he, he was talking about like wheels like 23 inch wheels and he just goes in his silly act he's like this thing is a chariot a chariot for ladies and gentlemen and that just made me cringe. Like, yeah, what is that? You're comparing a fucking Range Rover to a thing that's pulled by a horse in ancient Rome? Well, um, now keep I'm... in mind who, who, who traveled in chariots back in the day. Yeah. Upper fucking class, Caesar. And, you upper know, class citizens. And Caesars and, you know, the... Put me in a fucking chariot, if if you could please. But they also raced him like NASCAR. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> wow, I have those different chariots, but yeah, uh, I, I don't think so. God, I wonder what would that would be a fun race to watch, like a chariot race or like no, a drag I don't race. Think that would be fun at all. <laughs> It'd be a hell of a lot more fun than NASCAR. Um, yes. Well, <laughs> isn't isn't most things in life more fun than NASCAR? <laughs> I think the joy of a NASCAR race is just going there to get drunk, not actually watching the race. And it's yeah, fun when people crash. Yeah, yeah. I definitely cannot relate to anything yeah. um, NASCAR. <laughs> yeah, neither really can I. But also a chariot, again, off the chariot race, that'd be, it'd be hilarious Inedi- inevitably when one tips over and the guy falls out and he gets run over by a horse. Like, yeah, I've seen like I, was it called Chuck Wagon Racing in Calgary? It's something similar to that. And oh yeah, man, you you, you go you go to races to watch people crash. Yeah. Um. So yeah, there was that um plug-in hybrid's pretty cool. Um, I need to find that because there was some interesting stuff about the plug-in. Here we go. Oh, well, extended range, so you can get. Thing that's nice is this plug-in hybrid. They're not using the four-cylinder anymore, which is what the current one has. In the the big, the big Range Rover has yeah. a four-cylinder engine in it. The big, the current plug-in hybrid Big Range Rover has the four-cylinder. But so, like, granted, what do you do when they're going up a hill? Who cares what it is? It's it's a it's an almost what six thousand. How much does it weigh? I don't. I don't know off the top of my head how much the. Well, I'll find out. Yeah, let's. So but the thing is, Range Rover Hybrid, right? The plug-in hybrid, oh. the P four hundred E. I can hybrid. probably find that quickly. But the other thing is, Sweet. keep in mind, it's a three hundred horsepower turbocharged four cylinder with a hundred horsepower electric motor. So you know, yeah, four hundred horsepower, which is. No, that's yeah okay. On paper, that sounds great. However. In reality, hold on, Valar. How much does my Range Rover weigh? Range Rover, sixty nine hundred pounds as standard. So look, no, no, it's sixty nine hundred pounds for a sorry sport. sixty. No, six, no, yeah, six nine two zero. Land Rover. Oh yeah, look, Land Rover, no Scottsdale. Um, okay, the Range Rover weight. Oh, that's probably no, why did it say sixty nine hundred? That's probably the governor weight. How much can it? Oh, how much can a ra- Range Rover? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Gro- Range Rover carry gross vehicle weight is twenty nine. It's sixty nine. Uh, yeah, 6, that's with thousand nine hundred twenty. But the vehicle weight is yeah, it's just under. It's five five pounds shy of five thousand pounds. So so the the full the full size plug-in hybrid is 5500 pounds right and so a four cylinder with which is too small for that with, with a battery pack with a hybrid system that's too weak for that much weight equals have fun going through mountains 400 horsepower 400 horsepower is it's it, but it's not real because you're you got a four cylinder trying to move all that weight and then you have a hybrid system that's very small trying to move all that weight as well but bear in mind the four cylinder recharges the battery so you're always getting 
usually but it's, it's like go drive through, try pounding through some mountains and see how long that battery or that like i just yeah i just now bro, this, with anything big i just want power the now the what, like the p400 range rover the current one the l405 full size with the f- uh-huh. same 400 horsepower but with a six cylinder uh-huh. that thing weighs um um it doesn't it probably around the 5000 mark i would say a little bit more because it's a mild hybrid um they're saying it's 4974 it's going to be it's probably like 5200 but that's a six cylinder with the same amount of power yeah. and you know there's no replacement for displacement yeah However, I think you, know, like, and, you know, and there are just some people who don't care about speed yeah. and there are people who don't live in mountainous areas. Right. Um, yeah. So I, like maybe a six cylinder Range Rover is it's fine for them. And I will say this, however, in my defense, my Defender is the four cylinder with no hybrid. Right. You know, it's still a big car. Zero to 60 in seven seconds, which isn't fast, right. but it's, How that's, 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 that's right. not slow in, by any means. Oh, Seven seconds, seven seconds. Yeah, but seven, I mean, seven so seconds. You're, you're coming from a five liter V, and I came from a five liter V. Right. How long is that engine going to last, though? That's the thing. That's the problem. And honestly, like, it's not going to last. It's not because it's moving too much weight. It's under too much pressure. It's a four cylinder engine trying to move a big truck. Yeah. It doesn't work. There's a I reason mean, Honda was using four cylinder engines in their Civics. Yeah. Because it worked. Like you got the same, you got a four cylinder engine in your Defender, yeah. four cylinder engines in a Civic. So, long term, what's going to put a lot more stress on it? It is. And, right. And, That's you know, why V8s have the big lazy V8 because it's just yeah. like you're lazy. They don't like it just, yeah. right? And like, I know you don't care because it's like, you know, you're going to have the car for what, four or five years. Oh, I'm, I'm going to, like, I, I will, I promise I will never sell that car. Oh, really? Okay. Well, you won't care because like it's just those like a small engine on a big vehicle over time it just causes additional right. wear because the engine has to work so much harder it we- i mean the defender weighs like 4800 pounds mine mm. which yeah. is still pretty heavy it totally it, it gets up and goes i mean it's not slow on the highway you do need to give it a little bit more if you need to like oh, pass someone really quickly you yeah. do need to give it a little bit more throttle than my old yeah. lr4 with the v8 but in terms of zero to 60 my old 375 horsepower naturally aspirated five liter discovery for zero to 16 six and a half my mm-hmm. four cylinder 296 horsepower defender is zero to 60 and seven and half yeah, second like, this is a lot in the car world but in reality it's it's fine and i got the four cylinder because i did not like how the six cylinder delivered power and the V8 was just out of my price range. Yeah, I don't think V8 was out there yet. V8 is bloody expensive, but oh my god! Did, have you seen the new Bond done? The Bond. Yeah. If I was gonna buy a Defender, it'd be the Bond edition. Yeah, you can't because they're all so sold badass. out. Yeah, that thing is just so badass. The thing like, is, I'm, I don't like for twenty three. They changed it up so you can get, you can get the tan interior on the V8 now. Mm-hmm. Before you could only get the V8 with the. Uh, Alcantara, black Alcantara interior, which is just okay. stupid. Yeah. Full Alcantara and Defenders. Well, stupid. like, but it's always like, always when anything's new, you always have the fewest options. Yeah. And then as time goes on, like, man, there are way better specs for even the sport right now than when I had yeah. the option, right? Like, it's just, just how it is. Yeah. But it's all but good. Regardless, I'm happy with my choice, but let's go back to this new plug in hybrid okay. Range Rover. Which no longer has that four cylinder; it has the six cylinder. Right, and a better plug-in hybrid system. I believe. Yes, better battery. Um, they've designed it properly because there's, yeah. Well, yeah, because this was designed with electrification in mind. They had to retrofit exactly. that into the old. Bingo, one. and that's always a problem because it was a compliance car, pretty much. Exactly, and that's what, yeah, hundred percent. And well, actually, it's weird. the L four hundred five came like. A year and a half after the L405 came out, they did a hybrid, mm-hmm. but it was a it was a turbo diesel hybrid, and they it, it was only sold in Europe. And then they did like the new plug-in hybrid that mm-hmm. 
you know, they've been doing for the past several years now with the four cylinder gasoline engine. But regardless, the new one is the six cylinder. You can get, there's two different versions. There's P440E and P510E. Um, I assume the P440E uses the 360 horsepower version of this six cylinder engine that is used mm -hmm. in the Discovery. It's used in the uh, current Range Rover. Um, and with the electric motor, it gives you in, in all, you know, 440 horsepower. And so in the battery is a 38.2 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery. The usable capacity is 31.8 kilowatt hours. So you can use almost 100% of this battery mm -hmm. in a 105 kilowatt electric motor integrated into the transmission. Mm -hmm. And <laughs> this combination uh, provides a WLTP electric vehicle range. WLTP is not used in North America. It's the European standard. WLTP EV range of up to 100 kilometers or 62 miles with an expected real world driving range of 80 kilometers or 50 miles. Right. Which is, I mean, 62 miles, if, if you can get that, which is unlikely, but I'm sure possible, is amazing for a plug-in hybrid. Most plug-in yeah. hybrids, you can only get like 20 to 30 miles on a full charge. Yeah, there's there's no doubt that people who get this system are going to be a lot happier with it than people who have the current one. Um, yeah. It, it, they've, they've improved. Um, that could be the biggest improvement is just the plug-in hybrid and um, the yeah. hybrid um, systems over the, the previous generation. Yeah, and then you have the p 510 which is even more powerful. That uses, it, it says they do use the 400 horsepower tune of that six cylinder mm -hmm. uh, with the 105 kilowatt hour uh, electric motor. So you get 510 horsepower, 700 Newton meters of torque, 700 Newton meters is 516 pound feet. Uh, and that is zero to 60 in 5.3 seconds, which again, yeah is not slow but it's still going to be slower than the v8 which makes it 13 more horsepower but it doesn't have all the weight of the batteries and right. the electric motor um which, that sounds a lot better hopefully yeah, i don't, we don't know we haven't, we haven't really heard it i right? know but it's remember that engine is straight from bmw i know but you can tweak stuff to manipulate I know, things. but do you think they've done that probably not oh 100 percent this thing, so like I said, this, we, we talked about in the last one a little bit. This is the exact same amount of power and torque as the BMW tune of this engine. The but are they getting same. it the exact same way? Probably. I'm sure they probably are. I, I don't know. Let's see. We, we We're not going to find it in there. We're not going to find it in there. That's going to be like stuff the, the techs and the engineers are going to know. All right. So, so uh, yes, the, the, the V8 to 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds compared to 5.3. So it's almost a full second faster than the plug-in, the more powerful plug-in hybrid. Now, the V8 is um, uh, 530 PS, which is 523 horsepower, 750 newton meters of torque, which is 553 pound-feet. And that comes in, the torque comes in at 1,800 RPM and stays flat all the way up to 4,600 RPM. Now, the BMW power plant makes the same amount of power and torque, but I just wanted to make sure where that torque comes in, if, if, it's, if it has a different... Um, uh, let's see. That comes in. So actually, the nope, that's it makes the exact same amount of power, the exact same amount of torque, and it has the exact same torque curve is the BMW engine in this Range Rover. Well, Probably gonna feel the exact same. Now I, granted, it's a different I, I car. Don't think it's the exact same. I don't think so. And like said, the the um Um, I, yeah, I don't, uh, I, I, I don't like that engine. And like I said, the reliability of that engine is notorious. It's notoriously unreliable. I told you, I have a neighbor that had one and he, he was it worse than the current V6 engine that Land Rover makes. I would argue 100%. Yes. 
Other than that, these that. these new engines, these new BMW engines, aren't too bad when they're new. But mm-hmm. once they get like fifty to seventy thousand miles, then a lot of stuff happens. But granted, I have a neighbor that had a seven fifty i. He leased it, mm-hmm. and it had like forty thousand miles on it, and it needed a new engine. Yeah, same well, engine. A lot of V6 Range Rovers that need new engines with less miles. So yeah. I tell you, my mom's discovery has that V6 engine and it's in the supercharged V6 is not had a single issue. You know what? But like I've seen most of these now, maybe because I'm biased towards Range Rovers, but I've seen, I've heard most of the problems. It's with the Range Rover, with the engine in a Range Rover versus that engine in a Discovery having issues. It makes no sense because it's the same makes platform. Zero sense. It's the same platform, so, same exactly. exact engine, same transmission. Know. It could I, be packaging differences, but that wouldn't make any sense. It I don't know. Affect it, but um, no, you're talking V. You're talking the supercharged V6. Yeah, the one that not, where the crankshaft crankshaft blows up. That's the diesel. The diesel is the one that has the crankshaft issues. I thought both of them had issues. Those two engines are completely different. The 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 diesel is a really old engine that was manufactured by Ford and like PSA mm-hmm. years ago and Land Rover bought the rights to it when Ford mm-hmm. sold Land Rover, yeah. but Ford still manufactured that engine for them under contract. I thought both V6 engines were kind of a troublesome. The, but yes, the diesels, yeah, I've seen crankshafts fail at oh, well over a hundred thousand miles. I've seen crankshafts on those diesels fail at 10,000 miles. Mm-hmm. But the supercharged V6 is this, it's the five liter V8. They just drill six cylinders into it instead of eight cylinders. Mm. It's the exact same engine, um, which they don't make well, that engine anymore. Um, the V6, they still do the V8, but yeah. they're saying here uh, dynamic launch engage. So I guess it has launch control mode. Um, no, V8. no, let's no, because they would call it that. No. That, that doesn't make sense to have something like that on a Range Rover. Yeah, it says the new uh-huh. engine produces 750 newton meters of torque and powers the new Range Rover from 0 to 60 in 4.4 seconds with dynamic launch engaged and a top speed of 155. Dynamic launch engaged sounds like some marketing BS. Yeah, which, pr- dynamic, which probably marketing okay, it's, BS for brake torquing the car. Like, it's just <laughs> launch control would be called launch control. Why change? Yeah. Why? Ch- why? Why? Yeah. So, I doubt it. As yeah. bad, like I could see that on the sport. Why the hell are you gonna put that on a full size Range Rover? I will say they're saying the new V has been calibrated to suit the requirements of the world's most luxurious and capable SUV that features a specific, especially designed sump to ensure the new Range Rover can cope with forty five degrees of articulation in extreme. There you go. So the engine so, has so they, they, yeah, they put a new sump on it. It's this, this the V six and the V eight. Yeah, and, yeah. In Go Jaguars, ahead. they have the exact same five liter and three liter. They have different sumps than all the Land Rovers. Right, right. Like, yeah. You so, have to change that. Yeah, like things will be changed for sure. So I just don't know enough about engines. So yeah. Anyway, we'll we'll leave. We'll put a pin in that and come back to it later. Mm-hmm. But I don't know. I'm happy that the V8 is still there. I'm very happy they're still doing it. I still wish it was the five liter. Yeah, so do I. Um, I don't think that V8 BMW engine has it has nowhere near the amount of character that the. We'll see what we'll see what they've done with it. We'll we'll just we'll just have to wait and see. We'll we'll just have to wait and see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what else is there? Uh, interior. Oh, like I said, we, infotainment's cool. It's still you know Pivi Pro, which has been around for a couple of years now, but it's it's a really really good system. Um, yeah. Uh, it has that. Oh, where was the um. Yes, there's three three Meridian audio systems, the base 400-watt Meridian sound system, which Mm -hmm. now has a center channel. So it is surround sound, even on the base Meridian, which they've never done before. Yeah, The Meridian sound system never had surround until this. Then there's a Meridian 3D sound system, which... Mm -hmm. Gives you a better surround, and then obviously the height speakers and a like a, an eight hundred watt amplifier instead mm-hmm. of the four hundred watt. And then there's the Meridian Signature, sixteen hundred watts, and it's like thirty something speakers um, with the active noise cancellation. 
Yes. And the noise so cancellation for that. in the, which is pretty much only from what I can tell, the noise cancellation is basically just part of the um, Meridian signature system. It has yeah. speakers in the headrests. It, like mm-hmm. yeah. act, it's, it's like, it's like noise canceling headphones, which is actually really, really cool. More stuff, the uh, 3D surround camera that's been around since the Defender. Mm-hmm. That's nothing new. Um, oh, the tailgate event suite, which is actually pretty cool. It's just the, it's just the seating. Yeah, but they also yeah, said that with on Meridian's website, if you get the tailgate event suite, you actually get more speakers in the car. Well, yeah, you just get the two speakers on the tailgate. Yeah. So, um, yeah, no, it's cool. Like, it's a party trick. It is a party trick. It's yeah. like if you're some rich person that's going to go watch horse racing or no if you want to have some fucking beers with your buddies and, and then there's that them, too you're going to fucking open that up that's what i'm going to use it for that's like, that was where right? i was going Bro, with that r- remember range over the hundred thousand dollar vehicle there's yeah. people ain't buying it yeah right i know right you're but a 20 year old driving a defender yeah right rich people don't, a like a lot of money for that but. right but i'm just saying like it's not that rich poshness that people are thinking anymore right no like you it's know people like the kardashians they're they're rich but they ain't fancy well no, man but like, they're also crap people, they but. they no they buy them for their, their their beater vehicles yeah right like yeah. let's not let's not pretend the range rovers like in the same class as the bentley Bontega or rolls royce colligan Right. Some people or, are kind of comparing the people SV are idiots. too. Or what? People are comparing the SV to, to that. To the, the who? The Land Rover marketing department? No. Who who's comparing the, the, the Range Rover SV to a Bentley Bottega? A lot of people. Who? It's, if you think about it, they're, they're morons. Like, they're no, basically they, in they, the same just, price there's no, category. There, there's it's just it's it's no, it's not nope. as nice, but they cost it's not. similar like, money. Does it? A fully yeah, loaded S- Range Rover compared to a fully loaded Bentley Bentayga? That's a different story. A fully no, it's loaded not. Range Rover. You said same money. Well, give me a fully loaded Range Rover and a fully loaded Bentley Bentayga. Is it the same money? No, no one's a you, house. you didn't let me finish. I said the fully loaded Range Rover costs basically the same money as a light to mid spec Bentley Bentayga. Okay, so what does that tell you right now about? Range Rover and Bentley. They're not designed for the same it's, people. Bingo. Just like well, a fully loaded Jeep Grand Cherokee is a cheap Range Rover. Yeah, but also I, I will mean, say that if you own a Bentley Bentayga, you almost certainly have a Range Rover. No, not necessarily. You're yeah. probably just driving a Bentley. You probably have a Range Rover. Like I said, it's, I'm like that going it. back to the Kardashians. You probably have a Range Rover as your everyday car. But you can't compare celebrities because like they just spend it on like because they're, they're, they're I mean, the Kardashians are famous for literally nothing. No, All no, but like we're just talking income wise, account. right? When you yeah. get to like when you're doing a few million dollars a month, mm-hmm. um, you look at spending a little differently, right? I mean, like a Range yeah. Rover is a really easy impulse decision. Yeah, right. You buy it for a kid, whatever. Yeah, right. Um, but a fully loaded but Bentley Bottega is like double the cost. Yeah, like a loaded right, Bentley like, Bottega is what? like three hundred fifty thousand dollars. Yeah, you buy right. two really nice. So let's not spec like, Range Rovers yeah. for that. So that's what I'm just saying. Range, I and you know I'm a fanboy. Yeah, me too. Range Rover ain't a Bentley. No, it's not. They can try all they want, but it ain't it. No, right. So get sp- speaking of that, um event suite whatever the hell it's called so for people that are going to be watching this on youtube uh th- this is it here we have this very posh looking lady sitting frezza um, yes she looks italian and she's got like what gucci sunglasses on like why did yeah sure. oh, like, fuck. i need to go on uh, yeah i'll do a video as soon as i can get one of those i'll show you what the event suite's really for I, yeah, as soon beers, as I can get, get, get me one of these, like, like, you, this, you this pull is where really the new ladder marketing. Like, yeah. I, I know, and like, you could tell who they're going after, but like, yeah, it's uh, you, yeah, oh my god, if, if if the marketing people saw like someone taking this to a football game tailgating, they'd probably get sick in their mouth. 
Well, <laughs> no, but I think they also understand the luxury market has changed a lot over the oh, years, yeah. right? It's no longer this Fresa buying it. It's, you know, young folks mm-hmm. who, who just make good money purchasing. In, 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 uh, in, it's, in, in it's, Chinese it's, people. Right. Yes, 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 definitely. Um, so it's a lot just, of young it, Chinese people. Yeah, correct. I'm not being yeah. racist. That's just that's just no, no, no. I'm just trying to th- I'm trying to like think, okay, which direction do I go on that? No, that's not facts aren't racist. Yeah. I mean China right. sells more cars than basically everywhere else. And yeah. um it's yeah, no. So younger like, people luxury in China market is just different now, yeah. right? Like it's it's just it it's just different. Like Ferrari has this issue, and yeah. they they still have the stick of their ass. They do, um, you know, because they don't like young people driving their cars or like these right or YouTubers driving them because oh, and then you have to buy. We're doing any of that because it makes it ruins the brand and yeah, yeah that absolute bullshit. And, then, and it's yeah. like, oh, you want to buy a brand new Ferrari? Yeah, you can afford it. You, well, you can't buy it. You need to buy a yeah. used Ferrari first, and then you right. can buy Fair a new mind. Ferrari. Yeah. It's funny. I, this Saturday, I have um, a friend of mine coming on. Uh, she works for Ferrari. I'm gonna have. I'm gonna question her on some stuff to see if it's really true or not she probably she i know she will not budge at all but yeah. it's worth a try right but no they but it's but no like it's kind of speaking of like like in china like cars are so expensive in china mm. like there's so miami university here in ohio in oxford ohio which is like mm-hmm. an hour north of me it's a party school Mm-hmm. But there's a lot, there's a huge, huge Chinese um, population up there. All these kids go to school there. They come from China. Their parents give them money to go like buy a car. They think, you know, they'll give them like 200, $250,000, $300,000 for a car. And they think, oh, they, they'll they just go out and buy like a Toyota Camry with that. Because that's like how much a Camry costs in China. Right. Yeah, I know. It's, it, and then it, they all like, show up and they're driving around in Lamborghinis in, in, a, in a fucking college no, campus. I'm, I'm from Vancouver. Like, I, I, I know how the Chinese yeah. the Chinese do their, their, their spending yeah. on, on vehicles and stuff. I'm very familiar with, 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 with that. So. I wasn't sure, but it's, it's kind of funny seeing people my age partying, at, mm-hmm. barely speaking any English, partying just because they have a Lamborghini. That their parents thought and their parents think they went out and bought like a Toyota Camry. Yeah. But so, it's yeah, different. It's a different, it's a different world. It's a different world. Um, different, you know, different culture, all that. Um, what else? Uh interior. I think the interior of this, I, I still have this pulled up. Really, really, really nice looking interior. Um, I'm not a big fan of the two-spoke steering wheel. Okay. Even though it's kind of it's kind of a force. I'd say it's a split two-spoke steering wheel. Um, I prefer, you know, a sportier steering wheel, but remember this isn't, Same. it's That's not really not. a sports car. I'm sure the Range Rover Sport when it comes out, will have a much better steering wheel than this. Yeah. Um, that's a big um, digital gauge cluster. Mm-hmm. It's a 13.7 inch gauge cluster, which the industry standard is 12.3 inches for a big one. Some no, really. like Volkswagen, they have like smaller ones on like the cheaper cars. And then, you know, Audi and Mercedes, BMW, Jaguar, Land Rover until now, um, you know, fucking GM Chrysler. It was always like you had to have a 12.3 inch gauge cluster. That's okay. what they all are. I don't know if there was a law around that or if it was just the industry standard, but they made it bigger. Mm-hmm. And this has a 13.1 inch curved uh, Pivi Pro touchscreen, which is actually bigger than the ones than the current curved ones that are in, you know, the Jaguars and yep. the Land Rover Discovery. So it's not the exact same screen. It is. It is bigger. Uh, it has Amazon Alexa in it. Okay, I could care less about that. Really, I don't care about Amazon. I, Alexa. I think car companies should stop doing that. Just open it up and let people use whatever they want to use. Like Amazon Alexa, I'm never once going to use that. I just don't use yeah. it right i'm kind of worried that i don't know how this will turn out but i'm kind of worried maybe in like 10 years with like the rise of apple carplay and android auto if automakers are just going to stop developing infotainment oh 100 they need to they need to tie it over and hand it over to google and people i don't want google in my car stealing all my information 
Oh man, you give that up. I'm um, difficult. No, they, I know. Top makers are like the worst people to design this shit. They need to hand it over to the pros who who understand tech. Yeah. And then our cars will finally be up to speed like our phones. Yeah. Right. So, I will say though, Tesla was pretty good at that. Um, yeah, they just can't make Tesla's good a cars. tech company. Tesla's a right? tech company, not a car company. Exactly. And they I just, hate the people that yeah. buy Teslas. They're, not they're, all they're, of them are idiots. No, but a no. lot. Of, I'm talking about the ones that join the Tesla clubs. Well, I know, I know. They're just uh, they Tesla are just they've uh, what's tech people Musk understands how think, to build a cult following, yeah. and it was just phenomenal. It's just like Apple. Yeah. Right. It, like, but that's how you sell the most products. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's and okay. I think with that, like the Tesla people that are super into they think they are car enthusiasts, but they're not. Yeah, that's they, okay. They think they become it's car okay. enthusiasts because they bought a Tesla and it's like Apple people think they're they're tech tech techy people, but they're yeah, no, most of them just like Apple and yeah. they don't know anything else about tech. No, like that's totally okay. Like, and, yeah, but I will say all, all these automakers, like for example, like Pibby Pro was not actually really developed by Land Rover. I mean, Land Rover had, you know, the design and all of it, but it's BlackBerry QNX software. Oh, that's what it wow. Is. BlackBerry. That's the company you want designing fucking tech. Yes, I, it is. Because they parts. are all about... No, 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 no. Don't even... No, no. Really. BlackBerry? BlackBerry. The, how uh, how are they... Are they... What's their stock trading at? A dollar? Negative a dollar? Like, bro, man, BlackBerry. They have gotten... So actually, it's funny. I saw this earlier today today it's january 4th tuesday yeah. january 4th 2022 today is yeah. the last day black the old school blackberry phones will work blackberry. starting tomorrow if you have an old blackberry phone it will not work at all like your stock it yeah i still oh, have i still have a blackberry that was my very first phone was a blackberry Jesus. and i thought i was hot shit yeah. at school because i had a blackberry and I got it when everyone was starting to transition from BlackBerry to iPhone. Yeah, no, BlackBerry is just like that company. Like, I but just, they make software. They don't do phones anymore. They, they're a I know. Company. I just, I just, like, have they even learned their lesson? Who knows? I'm not a tech person, but it's like a lot of tech people will tell you BlackBerry software is very good. I'm not going to argue with you because you're you're entitled to your own opinion. I, um, like, yeah, I just like, yeah, no, they've just like, it's like companies have kind make, of fallen off the radar. Right. Like companies that make such a colossal mistake as what they did. It's just, it's really, they have to make a, a like a massive shift. I like, yeah, maybe they are doing better, but like, yeah, that's like, ne that's like Blockbuster saying, you know, hey, we're going to pedal with like, or Kodak, right? Like, look what Kodak did. What Where's did Kodak? they do? I mean, yeah, I mean, they did. I know they did the disposable cameras. No, but like they didn't, sh they didn't change because they thought the market was going somewhere else. And, right. Yeah. But they're and still around, but they do something, but nobody knows what they do. Well, people know but right in blackberry i'm like you know they when the iphone came out they thought the screen was stupid and they didn't get in ultimately well i know and that's yeah now what's blackberry doing right but like i just don't know man like honestly that that's a massive gamble i didn't know that like yeah. and it might be no issues but like wow it's not like land rover is known for their amazing <laughs> technology right and like they're they're amazing infotainment Technology. They've never been. And um, Pivi Pro is the best they've ever done. Is it perfect? Well, obviously, no. they can't keep going. They can't go backwards. But now, at least, it's but, extremely competitive. It's or it's extremely competitive. It, it is right, and they, they they definitely have learned. It's just like I don't know. It's a little be, too late, almost. It well, did no, a little no, too it's late. Because remember when iDrive first came out? That I, you know, when iDrive first came I out, I was like six months old. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Okay. But but Bro, but I drive I know to, exactly. BMW what you're used about. to be the laughing stock of infotainment. Yeah, because I drive everything like in what, the screen. It was everything that you never want to do with your infotainment system. Yes. Was I drive? But yeah. look at BMW now. They figured it's, it out. They did, and it's one of the best. You know, the thing, what's funny? They figured it out, and they barely changed the basic controls. 
Right. Like, I guess, and it could have been like, it came out just too early. Like we weren't yeah. ready for it, but um, so who knows? And that's why it's like, I won't give up faith or, you know, on, um, on that. like they have like year after year, their warranty claims are dropping yeah. like a rock that show that's like, you know, that shows that things they're, they're, are improving. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, they, man, they took a risk. Like, and obviously, I will say, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was oh. like, yeah, they took a risk. Blackberry, you know, I was giving them a hard time, but it's like that company really, they, they, they were leaders. And then they said, no, that's never going to work. Ignored it and went bankrupt. Like companies that make mistakes like that. And I'm sure there's a new CEO and lots of changeover, yeah. but like, those are like, those are really things that, like those are scars that go deep, right? So yeah, there's software. I, I'm curious. Like, yes, BlackBerry phones you know, stop working today. Like I had one BlackBerry phone. It's the worst phone I've ever had. But God, I, I this is like the one I had. Basically, it was this exact one. It had like little touchpad instead of the ball. Yeah, don't they all look like that? That was the, yeah. I, that was the similar one I had. I think. But, but anyways, but no, the BlackBerry. Yeah, they do software now. And I will say, um. With Lender, kind of going, you know, it's, it's obviously related. Um, mm-hmm. Sound systems and infotainment, you know, just you know, go together. Totally. I will say Land Rover has always done a really good job with their sound systems. Um, they used they to do always, they used to yeah. do Harman Kardon. They were actually oh, really they? good. Okay. My old Disco Four had the bass Harman Kardon sound system. Harman Kardon is used by who now? Is that being? Oh Who's God, BMW has used Harman Kardon for years. BMW Harman oh. Kardons. It's a bit strange. I think they sound pretty decent, not excellent, yeah. but very decent. But in objective, like audio system testing, they score very poorly. Yeah. Um, but they, I think they sound pretty good. So BMW uses Harman Kardon; they're the big ones. Yeah. Mercedes used to, Land Rover used to. But in terms of companies that do it today, BMW, Alfa Romeo, Jeep has it in some. Chrysler uses Harman Kardon, Dodge. Um, so is Mac in your high end ones? Hyundai uses Harman Kardon. Volkswagen is using Harman Kardon. A lot of um, companies. Oh yeah, uh, Harman Kardon is used by a shit ton of companies. Um, oh. Again, we have the world at our fingertips. Um, and actually, Harman Kardon was owned by this company called Harman International that got bought out by Samsung a couple years ago. So Harman is now part of Samsung. So automotive, this is at least here in the US. So Harman Kardon is used in Volkswagen, Volvo, BMW, Subaru, Ram, Mini, Hyundai, Kia, Maserati, Dodge, Chrysler, Alf- and Alfa Romeo. Hmm. I forgot about, I can't believe I forgot about like mini, like that's BMW, but, yeah. and I'm sure they're used in other cars, not sold here in the U S so they are you know, a lot, a lot of companies use Harman Kardon, mm-hmm. but going back to the land, the old Land Rover Harman Kardon systems are actually pretty good. Yeah. Um, huh. But it's uh, yeah, it's, um, it, I like and they went to Meridian. Of- yeah, I like Meridian's Paytech. great. Who's using what now? It's uh, I want to try Jeep's sound system. That's something I'm looking forward to. Oh, the Macintosh, Macintosh. dude. Yeah. So I was in a Grand Wagon. We I think we were talking about that before, dude. It was really. I didn't get a full proper test of it, but I was extremely impressed. Um, basically, yeah. same level is is the 825 watt Meridian surround sound not still not as good as the meridian signature in my opinion or the current meridian Macintosh signature is supposed to be really really good they are yeah but oh so you didn't try like their top end one in i like, did grand but, wagoneer? but i was in a grand wagoneer with like all the windows down there were people crawling in and out of the car because it was at a car show oh you didn't have like a private yeah no like right. where you plug your phone in and like, i did plug my phone in. they let me plug my phone in and the car was on but like people were i i, I wasn't going to be rude and say hey everyone get out of the car for like five minutes and let me listen to it. i will i mean it's, you just guys just give me 30 seconds i yeah. need to test this yeah, yeah. but, but it, was, it was really it was really cool it has all like the old 
Mac how big is the like, grand wagon here? Big. Fucking huge. Yeah, it looks it's so it's in between like there's no like small and big one. It's kind of in between the size of a Tahoe and Suburban, but it's oh, really. It, it, it's you know, I sat in that thing, and I was honestly that thing. The interior quality and materials is within ten percent of a Range Rover. It is almost as nice as a Range Rover, and I, I genuinely it's like to mean drive it. truckish because it's a yeah, body on frame. yeah yeah. But like yeah, and like, it gets like thirteen miles per gallon. <laughs> Yeah, I can imagine it's probably not the best, but the uh, nah, it, it'd be interesting to see how that thing drives in and not drives, but what it does for the driver. Yeah, and those are some of the things that I really um, look they're, for. They're out. I actually saw one yesterday. I'm gonna have to go to my local Chrysler dealer and test drive one because they'll let me test. You know, the thing is, with me and my age, people don't take you seriously, but when you show mm-hmm. up in like a higher end car, they do. Yeah, they'll just give you whatever you want. Yeah, in you, I hate to waste people's times, and luckily I have a lot of friends that work at car dealers. Okay, and usually I'll go Bro. with them. But like, you ain't, again, you ain't wasting the time. Just be like, hey, let me, let me, let me take this car. I want to go show my wife. Okay, yeah. bring it back tomorrow. Boom, you have a full day with the car. That's what I yeah. do. And the thing is, like, with like, if I go to a car, I don't fucking care if I'm wasting someone's time at a Chrysler dealer. Because guess what? As soon as I leave, thirty seconds later, Joe Schmo is going to come in, and they're going to buy. I hate dealing with those dealerships so much. My brother just bought a new Tram because, well, we lost his other one on the mountain. Um, And uh, yeah, it's just his buying experience was so much better this time around. But those, yeah, I don't, um, those dealerships, I just can't stand it. Suck, yeah. So So. we'll kind of wrap this up in a bit. Let's just talk a couple more things about Range Rover. Um, You know, like there's just so much, Um, you know, yeah, do you I'll tell you what, do you want to quickly like go on your configurator, build one, and then we can like show them off and I'll just edit Didn't this we out. do that last time? I don't have yours anymore because I think you sent it to me in chat. And we didn't like fully finish it either. Because didn't like, we go through it? You went through yours, I think. On video, yeah. We went through it on the thing. Yeah. And then I think right as I was doing mine, you had to go take your kids trick-or-treating. But I can't remember. Yeah. No, I'll leave that up to you. Through both of them? We might have. I'll have to I go thought we look. did. I thought that was one of the things. Let's that we let's, went through both. Let's pass on this for right now. Uh-huh. And if for some reason I don't have it, I can maybe we can maybe do a quick like 10 minute zoom call and do that yeah, later. Because this isn't in. going, this isn't going up into for three weeks. Um okay. But yeah, I'm oh. just trying to think what else is there. I mean pretty much did everything at this point right mm-hmm. oh electric range rover let's talk about that briefly really quick yeah we sounds good about that because that's coming out so i guess next thing um they're doing an electric fully full ev range rover uh, it's going to be on sale in 2024 yeah uh I, i've faith in them because jaguar land rover kind of hit a home run with the eye pace when it came out a few years ago yeah, it came out. It was fantastic. Now, it's still good, but it, it's kind of old. I mean, EV technology has gotten so much better in three, four years since that car came out. But this mm-hmm. car, this platform, this new MLA Flex platform, is designed to for you know full ICE, plug-in hybrid, and full EV. So, what would you buy an electric Range Rover? No, neither would Who would I. buy an electric Range Rover? God, I don't know. Maybe uh okay. No, someone will. Electric electric vehicles aren't there yet, and they won't be there they're by twenty twenty four. They're not. No, they won't. Not for not for big ass SUV. That's like it's cool. Yeah. Um, Jeep's doing some great things on their four by E. I'll tell you right? what. Speaking but, of that, my neighbor. Mm-hmm. Got a sport SVR last year. Yeah. Or actually, it was probably pushing two years now. Mm-hmm. Ordered it, took forever to get, and didn't really like it that much. Yeah. So he went, so he, he said it, it, the ride was a little too rough. It was a little too Why race didn't, car. Did he not test drive one? Like, I don't understand. He, he how didn't. People no, can he, make he, this he, was, he, he, he was going to get an autobiography. And so, and then what? And, he test drove an SVR. 
he no he test like, drove it on he actually he was going to test drive an svr but it turned out that one was already sold and the owner was the person that bought it was a gonna pick it up at any moment so they could okay so whatever and then so he drove he an autobiography drove. that's what okay. he wanted to get was an autobiography and he said well if i'm spending this much money i might as well go for the svr so he's not a car person he didn't know no, he was he's buying. not he's not a car person. okay cool that's all that in that yeah he's that just sums it up okay he, he likes a car he likes nice cars but he's not a car but he person he's not like a, us you can like he's, he doesn't know what the car is he bought something right. he didn't know what it was so and he um and he I mean, he went all out he got like everything um meridian signature like carbon fiber hood it was santorini black black interior it's a very nice car he still has it his wife drives it around um so he was like it rides too rough so he what does he go out he buys a wrangler four by e oh yeah that's like right a lot softer <laughs> right but so, he loves it because he he's cool. he, i talked to him power to him no for him it works you know i talked to him uh new year's Mm-hmm. Um, you know we went to his house at new year's and he said that um he's had that car since like may he's only filled it up twice with gas because he drives that thing to work his commute is like yes, so four miles really drive. right and he's like, like okay yeah and there's people who drive like four thousand kilometers a year yeah like it doesn't really count as like you know it's like okay no but for him <laughs> it, you know it, it makes sense but but like no. i said but like no. as you were saying like you were saying you like what Jeep is doing four by E. I think the Wrangler four by E is a really good car. And in fact, oh, but in a, an electric Ranger, I just don't think the technology is going to no. be there for it if to be want- as good as it should be. Uh, that's why I won't buy it. Um, not only that, you talk about the charging systems, oh, and I know they're yeah. better in the states, but they're nowhere near where I would want them to be to have yeah. an electric vehicle. Even here, where they're um, you know just popping up everywhere. It's still going to take a very, very, very long time for these things to really make sense. Uh, and, they should just be putting them at every gas station. Yeah, right. But but big oil, stations. big oil doesn't want that, right? And, rightful, um, and rightfully so. No, but, of course. So it's no. I think we're a long way from from that. But and like, uh, and if you want an electrified Range Rover, get that extended range plug-in hybrid. You can go. Or just go buy a Rivian RS1 or RST. Yeah. Oh, I saw one of those the other last this past weekend on the road. Like that would be so much better than an electric Range Rover. Ten times better. And a lot of people buy an actual electric vehicle. Buying don't buy a don't buy a company what yeah Range Rover. I would I would definitely do that. Like those look really cool. Yeah, no, they look so sick. I saw, I, I can't believe I saw one in person. I was on the highway and there was this car coming. I was like, wait, what the hell is that? I was like, oh, fuck. That's, a, that's the new Rivian R1T. And I was on the highway doing like well over the speed limit. I was doing like 90 miles an hour. And I was I was just like, and then just staring in my mirror like, <laughs> like holy fuck. It's like, I haven't seen one yet. And they're like not, yeah, they're, no, they're in production. Neat. And they're, they're really they're, cool. In production and delayed. Yeah, but that was expected. They're actually, it's funny, they're made in the old, um, the old uh, plant in Illinois that was, um, oh shit, it was Mitsubishi Chrysler. Uh, fuck, I have to look it up. I'm, I can't believe yeah. I'm. Uh, was it DSM? Yeah, it was DSM. I, I thought that's what it was. I just want D, the Diamond Star Motors. It was the oh, joint right. venture ship between Chrysler and Mitsubishi. Like you had like the 3000 GT and you had the Eagle Town. Yeah, long time ago. And they had this big plant in Illinois and that's where they're now making Rivians. It's kind of like how Tesla bought the uh, old GM Toyota factory in, in uh, uh, Fremont, California, in the Bay Area, where they used to build the Toyota Matrix the Pontiac vibe. <laughs> That's where, really, like, God, who would have ever? And they used to make pickup trucks in that in the old Tesla factory. They used to make pickup trucks. Can you imagine like pickup trucks being built in San Francisco Bay Area where they're frowned upon? Back in the day, huh? Jeez. Yeah, God. Cool. But anyway, Fair so enough. yeah. I'll tell you, why don't you tell everyone where they can find you on you know social media or YouTube? On you. Driven Hard on YouTube and Driven Hard Official on Instagram. Just look at the hat if you're watching this. Ah, if you're watching this, look, look right? So, 
Yeah, well, Emeka, thank you so much for coming on. We will have to come. I'm I'm going to invite you back on again later down the road to talk about stuff other than the Range Rover because you have a yeah, lot like, of stuff. Lots in the automotive space. Yeah. Automotive um, space. I, you know, you need to tell some about stories that. about your Range Rover. You know, the adventures you've done on that. I'm but, actually gonna I'm gonna film some some videos about talking about. Lots of people have been messaging me about Mexico and driving yeah. in Mexico. And like, how do you bring your car into Mexico? And so I'm actually going to film some videos about stuff like that. Like, yeah. like, okay, it's safe and how to do it. And like all the, bro, because the, I have dash cam and I got like dash cam footage that like, I can't wait to share with you guys. Yeah. Cause like, you have no idea what it's like driving here sometimes. Like is just it crazy. Is it like driving in Rome? Yeah, essentially? Yes, it is. Oh, just with wider streets. All right. That's uh, nice. just nuts. Like, it's just like markings on the road don't apply most of them are worn off and don't get repainted um yeah i was in just, rome it's, it's in crazy i was in a car accident or i was in a, i was in a taxi in rome i was in like a lancia ypsilon yeah. or some piece of little crap italian car and someone hit us someone on a motorcycle hit us you will not find a single car in rome that does not have some scratch on it i saw a brand new 911 crazy. that was scratched up but it's crazy Mexico, All right, buddy. yeah well, Mac, again, right, well, thank thanks you so for much for coming back. on. And we I appreciate will, it. Absolutely. And we will have you on again. With the, you know, Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Happy too, Happy New man. Year. All right. Cheers, bud. We'll talk to you later. All right.